Bonjour, je m'appelle Pete the Wargamer on Bienvenue Sir Mon stream. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the um, the first stream. This music's probably very loud at the moment. Let's turn that down. There we go. Um, welcome back to the first stream of the year. And as the um, as the title and thumbnail has pointed to, we're going to be building some Britonians and we're also going to be talking the old world. So I hope you all had a wonderful festive period and new year. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a nice, relaxed, chill that stream. Um, and yeah, we're just going to be talking about the old world. So I do, I'm going to preface this with, um, in addition to just building some men at arms, I also have the old world rule book. And I also have access to like the the ravening hordes and forces of order books as well. So if there are any questions that you have about those kind of things, you want to, anything that you kind of want to know about the, the rule books that game released, let me know. I can't show them on stream, but I can talk about them. Oops, sorry. But uh, yeah, we're going to have a nice, really nice chill stream, building some um, peasants. I've already been working away on my own. Um, Britannian army that I'm I'm hoping to get done at some point and a lot of projects in the future as well. So yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I thought for a second I tuned into a different channel. I know, yeah, this is this is too far too cultured for the uh, the Pete the Wall Gamer channel. I think this is so. Uh, um, but yeah, we're going to be just probably just jumping straight into it. I don't think we need to really um, spend too much time on it. I need to get familiar with this uh, the setup. So, first things first, I'm going to point out something which I don't know if it's been shown much. Some of the YouTubers might might have shared it, but this is quite, actually quite an interesting. So, if you, this is the um, Kingdom of Britannia big box instructions. So, obviously, you have all your instructions and things like that in there. But at the back, you also have an army list. For everything that's in the in the game, so it's the two thousand five one thousand two hundred and fifty points, um, and you basically get all of the rules, which is pretty good. It's basically you can build everything from the box this way, and it also gives you army special rules for um, the forces, and also gives you some reference points for the lance formations, things like that, um, which is quite useful, and it also gives you a nice little cardboard reference it's like a four four page little reference card there so that was quite a nice little thing actually that comes with the box set um but yeah apart from that pretty much everything apart from the general is obviously old stuff um so when, when i was kind of going through the the tomb kings stuff and the sprues have the dates on them and i think the dates are nearly as old as me i think i think the date on them is like 1993 or something stupid hopefully we're back um so this is actually, I, I've talked about this in the stream before, basically this is um, basically a, so this this 2003 date when this sprue came out was roughly the time that I actually got into Warhammer originally. So it's been about 20 years ago last year um, since I got into Warhammer and Britonians were basically released in the year that I kind of got into Warhammer. So that was that was quite nice. Um, it's quite nice to see that in there. So yeah, I've been building. I've I've built all the peasants from the the peasant art bowmen from the box set, and oh, there's something really nice about just building. These are obviously really kind of basic plastic models, but you know what? I think they're okay. They're not too bad. I mean, compared to something like I don't know what, what's the most modern model that I have here, equivalent, a stormcast that'll do. So if you you kind of it's not as crisp, it's not as clear. You can tell that these were probably hand sculpted as opposed to being um, CAD sculpted. But you know what? They're actually really nice. And I, I've really enjoyed just going and just building two part models. I, I don't know why, because something, if you think about the um, the Steel Helms, the Citizen Signal, probably the closest equivalent to these guys, you have, there's like two leg parts, and there's a torso part, and then their arms are separate, and the shields are separate, and the head's separate, and it's just. There's so many different components you have to clean up and find on the sprue. Whereas this is like, okay, um, let me grab a clean sprue. You can look at the sprue and you know exactly how everything goes together. You get a torso, you get heads, 
you get a shield, and then you get a speed. It's so easy. It is like it's kind of a breath of fresh air, really. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna build these. Um, anyway, 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 anyway. <laughs> He'll do everything but learn German for a spiel vacation. So, um, I am. So my New Year's resolution. It hasn't been very good so far. Um, but my New Year's resolution is to get back to learning German again, German again because I want to go to Spiel um, later this year. So I will be going. Whether or not I can speak any low-level amount of German by then is, is a different matter, but I will definitely be trying to do that. Um, Evelard, do, Evelard, do we know if the Paladin from the core set is limited to the core set, or will you see him in a separate set? Um, so my guess is that anything that's in the core set will find a release outside of the core set. I don't think anything in that core set is exclusive beyond, like, these things. I think maybe this and the whippy sticks. Um, and those, like, that's pretty much the only thing that you probably won't be able to get separately. But yeah, as far as I can tell, the the Bretonian, the, the standard bearer, the Pegasus standard bearer is the same, but it's got a slightly different kit, but yeah. I imagine that once these guys get released as a standalone kit, the Peasant Bowman do the Knights of the Realm, the Pegasus Knights, then I imagine that the, um, the leader will be as well. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Peter, you're not the only one who, who is not doing well with learning German. Uh, Duolingo has been sending me threats. Um... Are the, are the whippy sticks accurately inaccurate? I don't have much to check. I've got a steel rule. Let's have a look to see what we got. So this is... Let's have a look. I mean, it, it's not too bad compared to this. It's. It, I'd say that maybe... It starts to trail off towards the end. So i say by the time... Yeah, you probably lose a couple of mil by the end. So if I line this up at the beginning of the rule, look perfectly, you can see that we start to lose about half an inch every 12 inches. It's quite a light right in there, you can see there. There we go. So for every every foot along the whippy stick, you lose uh, you lose about an, half an inch. So yeah, they are they are still pretty inaccurate, but um, as long as both players are using, that's not too bad. <laughs> Hey Pete, the fillers you build are really cool. Glad to see you featuring in Warhammer Community. Yeah, I was really, um, I was really pleased with those. To be honest, I kind of had a, um, so basically, Games Workshop. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say and how much I'm not, but we're gonna, we're gonna say it anyway. It's not a problem. No one's gonna sit and watch a live stream. Um, I basically had uh, Games Workshop get in touch with me around about November last year, and they're kind of to talk about the idea of me doing some uh, unit fillers. And I think they kind of obviously wanted to bring back that concept that was very popular. I mean, I remember I used to I used to do Warhammer Fantasy Battles back in the day, and I lost the sprue that I need. Um, this is the one. And yeah, I remember unit fillers. And I'm, I'm, when I was dipping into the old White Dwarf archives and stuff like that, I very much remember um, unit fillers being quite a common feature. And um, yes, yeah, so I was quite eager to do some myself, and I'd already seen them. I think the first one I ever built, as well, when I when I was into Warhammer Fantasy Battle, I I basically took a spare forty mil square base, and I took a little bit of, but well, I say a little bit, it was, it was about as big as the forty mil base, um, like a lump of slate that I just borrowed from someone's garden. Don't know where I got it from, but it wasn't it wasn't a purchase. I can tell you that. And um, I basically stuck that to the base, and I had the there's like a, a cleaver, and then a rack of ribs from one of the ogres set. So it was like the old ogre ball set, and yeah, glued that on, painted up to look like a, a big chopping board, and that was like the first ever unit filler I did. It was only replacing one ogre, but at the time I didn't really have the kind of money for doing um, building an army. I was I wasn't. I mean, what time? How old would I have been? Probably about. 13, 14, something like that. So yeah, I didn't really have... So unit fillers were great. They were kind of really good little cheap options. And I mean, so the one I did for the video, you can see here, this is kind of... You don't have to do anything particularly expensive either. That is four 25mm bases. So you could stack four 
of them uh, so that's that's basically if you've got a base and a few extra bits that are left over from building some um some Britannians, you could literally just build one of those and that's four models saved easy peasy um i just kind of wanted i thought if i was going to do something for an article then it needed to be something a little bit more involved it needed to be something which is a bit more interesting not just a rock with some spare bits stuck to it i mean that's that's fine you can there's no problem using those as unit fillers but i thought well if it's going to be for an article it needs to be something games workshop aren't going to come to me and say yeah yeah come come and do this for us and then i just turn up with with that and say there you go <laughs> is that good enough is that interesting enough for an article Um, so yeah, did Games Workshop actually do unit fillers, or did you say, I'm going to do this? So, so I was always going to plan, I was planning on doing some old world content whenever it came out. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. Um, my initial ideas around doing content for, for the old world was basically something along the lines of um, updating old units. So units that were maybe, owned, haven't been re-released, which is, isn't many to be fair. Um, in any kind of so things like the bone giant it's looking a little bit old maybe the, the screaming catapult um screaming skull catapult thing um basically taking some of those older models and reimagining them in plastic with updated kits blah 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 and i was going to take the big kind of crocodile dragon thing from the um, tomb kings and try and reform that into a bone giant so that was my initial idea and basically games which i said well if would you be interested in coming up with some ideas for some unit fillers and I was like okay yeah no problem we said well, we just do one of each and then pretty much everything else was up to me so I just kind of had a bit of a, a brainstorm to figure out what what would look good and um yeah it settled on the obelisk and the cart so the cart was actually going to be a little bit more elaborate originally um the cart was originally going to be a almost like a, a little bit like the grail relic Reliqui, reliqui, however you pronounce it. Um, the Grail Pilgrims, the, the, it's sort of like that. On a card, it would be some sort of thing taken from the um, Sisters of Battle squads, and then that would be act as like a, a Grail that they were carrying. Um, but then I thought, well, it kind of that was getting a little bit too complex, really, and I thought this is supposed to be peasants at the end of the day. And yeah, so I just kind of check my bits box, I still had a load of Skaven bits left over from my Necrofex Colossus build and thought, yeah, I could make a car out of these, so did so. Um, I was quite happy with, with the end result, to be honest. It's one of those models which I roughly had an idea about, but I didn't really know how it was going to turn out until it, it was finished. The, the obelisk was probably the most, was the closest to how I imagined it would look and the end result would be. So yeah, I was quite happy with that one. Yeah, the only thing about these is the mold lines are pretty bad. Um, oh, Mache Svek. I, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that, that that properly. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, Pete. Loved all your videos last year and look forward to this one. Will you be doing Tomb King conversions? I would love to see you do some terrain. I don't know about terrain, but I will definitely be doing some Tomb King conversions. I have a... We're going we're gonna, to... I'm feeling that we're going to see a uh, the first... Firefox browser games workshop website tangent. I'm gonna just finish this and I, I will I will address your original question. Don't worry. Um, we also have Oracle Worm. Thank you very much for gifting a tier one sub. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Twitch streams. The Twitch streams haven't been going since the 10th of December. This is the first one, first Twitch and YouTube stream that I've done since like the 10th of December. Basically, the Kickstarter. Funded. Thanks everyone who backed it um, or shared it around, everything like that. Um, that's all being, that's all in the works now. That the, the funds have been processed. The money's been sent to War Games Atlantic. They're going to be starting tooling, um, getting all that kind of process set off nice and quickly. So yeah, that's all all a go, um, which is good news. Nice way to start the year. Um, so yeah, should all that 
Should that all go well, then we'll hope maybe be seeing another Kickstarter and I can pester everyone again later on. Um, right, what was I telling you? That was it. Um, Maciej, hopefully I've pronounced your name correctly. So let's go on. Look at this. I'm already on here. Why fuck some face? Um, okay, so we have... What was I going to look for? This is it. Oh. Pyrotitan? I think it is. So with... The release of... It's not on the Britannian section. Old World. Tomb Kings of Khemri. So this... I, I've talked about this in in the past. This is a model which I was... So annoyed that it was discontinued. Because it is such... A wealth of... Cool parts. Because it's like you can build it as... The... Um, this version. I can't remember. Was it the... There's a neck. Oh, Kem this is the Cambrian War Sphinx. So the Necro Sphinx is that that one, and the War Sphinx is the uh, the one with the howdah. But look at how many bits you've got. You've got cool little tail details. You've got the difference, the interesting skull, like the saber tooth cat skull. All these little bits of extra wing iconography, and then this. Now, what I wanted to build with this was essentially a version of this Hyro Titan. Now, this is a model from. This is a unit from Total War Warhammer. And yeah, I mean, it's it's not a, a completely original idea. People have already done it using those bits, but it was kind of hard to do a kick bash with a mod for a model <laughs> that you couldn't actually get a hold of the kits for. So it's it, like I said, it's not. But I think this is probably that one looks more like a print out from the game files. Personally, I would say that it is. Um, but yeah, I think that's just a really cool model. So who, oh no, actually, is this, is that the one I was just looking at? Oh no, it's a different one. So yeah, this is kind of, you can see where you have the Necro Sphinx um, and then there's a few extra parts in here which are probably 3D printed by the guesses. But yeah, my, my idea was to build something around that. So the fact that that kit is coming back, really happy about that. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm the, the first one to have that idea. It's really not an original idea, but I just wanted to tackle it myself. So yeah, other people have done it. Um, but yeah, that'd be cool. Um, the That's cool, I like that. The um, other thing as well is the, the Necropolis Knights as well. This is another kit which has some really nice components in there because if you don't build them as the Knights and you build them as the Stalkers, the Sepulchral Stalkers, I think, um, you get these cool Kopesh star swords. Honestly, if you are a Tomb... No, Thousand Suns player or... Um, I'd even say... possibly maybe some kind of word bearer. I've seen some kind of aspects of this kind of style being introdu introduced into word bearer as well, which looks pretty well. But yeah, there's some really, really cool stuff in these kits. I'm really glad to see them come back. And actually, when I when I was I was looking at it for um I think somebody in in one of the Reddits pointed out that the the cost of them actually isn't too bad considering inflation. I mean, inflation is pretty crazy at the moment. So, I mean, this is this is UK prices, so we're getting the best prices in the country. And if you knock this down by like um, retail prices, third party retail prices, um, it's even less. But yeah, that was my that was my hope to build something like that around the Tomb Kings. I also wanted to build turn um, the big crocodile thing. I've had a look at the sprue. And it's probably doable. It might require a little bit of extra work, but it's probably doable to make it into a bone giant with a little bit of um, fiddling. So yeah, that's that's going to be the that's going to be the intention there. <laughs> um, I did just see faces and bases comment over on Twitch. Um, Hi Pete, what's it like fooling half the nation into thinking that filler pieces were an actual release? Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's quite funny. There's quite a few people have said, "Oh, I thought this was an actual release," which was, which is nice. It's always a good. It's a good thing to get because it, it's not just the fact that I did the um, that I did the builds and people thought that they were, they were kind of like a genuine kit or anything like that. It was also the fact that I painted them and photographed them in such a way which made people think it was a Games Workshop release. So I was kind of like doubly. It was like a triple compliment that people thought they were actual release, which was nice. I, I I quite enjoyed the fact that some people I quite enjoyed fooling some people into thinking it was an actual release. Um, uh, Shadow two seven five one. How specific, specific were their requirements? I'm guessing you're talking about uh, Games Workshop. They literally said, "Can you do one for Britannians, one for Tomb Kings?" That was it. 
I had no um, restrictions on the unit filler size, what the concept was, what kits I used. There was nothing. They, they were very much in the case of um, pretty much this is the idea. Could you do it? Would you be interested in doing something for us? Um, and I was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And it's really up my street as well. It's, it, of, of all the things to do, it, it's unit fillers are just a perfect excuse to do free form. I suppose it's the closest I get to scratch bashing, I guess. Um, yeah, nothing nothing too complicated. Um, Kabuski, so you're just building regular Bretonians with these. I am, I am, but there is a caveat. So. I do. I have been playing around with some ideas because we obviously have the new Fortnite, so I'm just going to dip back into Firefox again. I do apologize. Um, and one of the things, so they're not actually released yet, which will hopefully change. Um, so the Bretonian Fortnites, they come with both swords and shields and also great weapons and another thing which is well known is that you have that wrong. you have the questing knights bretonian questing knights and these have rules these still have rules in the um the rule book that whatever they call force of order which one it, whichever one it is they still have rules um they are not being they, they've not been released i think the grail knights have been officially announced but these haven't but because they're in the the rule book i assume that they probably will receive return um but yeah i was thinking essentially making my own of these using so so my my old world conversions will likely be less down the lines of oh let's take bretonians and make them undead although i'm not scratching that idea out it's going to be more along the lines of Here's an old kit, which is metal or resin. People maybe don't want to work with it. Here's how you can build that out of plastic. Maybe build it cheaper. Same with the Grail Knights as well. The Grail Knights have actually been... Um, let's have a look. I can't shop just by... So the Grail Knights have been... I mean, these are, these are quite expensive. £36 for three, and yeah, you command us £36 as well. Whereas, I imagine that when the Knights of the Round kit comes out, they're going to be probably six for roughly the same price. Maybe maybe £50, pounds, I don't know. But, um, yeah, my idea was basically how I can, how, we, how can you go about using extra bits, extra shields, probably dip into Space Marine components for like the little, um, the relics and things like that. Lots of stuff. How can you make these into Grail Knights? So yeah, I'm going to probably work on on that aspect of kit bashing. Maybe the side of kit bashing, which I don't usually focus on, which is more of the utilita utilitarian version, because Old World is going to be one of those settings where there's rules for stuff, but there isn't necessarily models to support it. One of those is, is the... Um, there is rules for... a Like I said, I wish I could share them on, on screen, but I'm not allowed to. So... Uh, because they have <laughs> they have a big watermark over it, um, so I, I can use them. So it's the arcane journal. I actually don't have anything to sort that out. So yeah, one of the arcane journals is um, has rules for Bretonians using. It's mainly the border princes, the exiled Bretonians. So they have access to units which maybe a, a regular Bretonian army wouldn't. And one of those is a bombard. So I think it'd be really cool to have like some sort of. Um, Bretonian bombard, um, which would be which would be fun bit fun build. It doesn't exist as a model, so it really opens up lots of stuff in that regards. Uh, considering getting these to build a spooky Mussolini build, yes, I know it's not like pre vampire. So, well, this is the thing. I think a lot of people are saying, "Oh, well, th there's not going to be." Um, they've, they've said that there's legacy factions, things like that. You can run them, and that's going to be new stuff. But really, there's nothing stopping you from running an undead army and just saying that they're Britannians. I think as long as everyone can kind of clearly make out what each stuff is, if you have a unit of um, death knights, well, they're just knights of the realm. If you have a unit of men-at-arms with 
shields and halberds, where you can just say that they're skeleton spearmen with shields and spears. It's really quite straightforward. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's just about reviewing. Oh, I mean, you could run a, a vampire army as um, Camry, I guess, as well. But yeah, I think there's a, there's a lot of options being opened up, and I'm. I think I've got a very, a very soft spot for these these kits because these were one of the kits which I always wanted to collect and I just never got around to. And I remember very fondly looking through old white dwarves, um, just kind of imagining having a, a Bretonian army and just being, think just thinking oh, I'll do I'll do that one day I'll do that one day and then I I stopped collecting Warhammer um, for a bit and then I came back to it and. Focus actually came back to it, and then Bretonians were around for about a year or two, and then, and then the end times happened, um, and then yeah, all of a sudden everything died. So um, yeah, so we we lost it completely, unfortunately, which was a shame. But uh, you know, that's just the way it is, I guess. But yeah, they came back. So same with the Camry stuff as well. So I'm actually really pleased by that. So I I, I think I think you can all you can all. I, I've definitely had some good luck with this. I wanted to collect this army for so long. Um, so the only thing is... So another thing I wanted to point out as well, and I wanted to... How can I point this out easily? Okay. So one thing which I've seen... Uh, people saying a lot is um, all the all the plastic sprues are just old stock that Games Workshop have had. I know Games Workshop in one of the interviews said that they they aren't that they're, they're actually everything's been cast new. And I I am would believe them because if you look at this one, this is the new sprue. This is the new um, Duke sprue. This is like the the specific one. So you can see that's twenty twenty three modern day sprue. Looks like a modern day sprue has a well, last year's date on it. But look, it's the exact same color plastic. So you can see that it's the same color plastic, right? Same color plastic, but if we go, and I'm, I'm gonna go off on a tangent here. And we dip into one of my old bits box, one of some of the old remaining plastics that I have left over. So this is a, <laughs> this is from either the old, it's either from, someone will be able to identify this, I'm sure, better than I can, but some either one of the old, um, it was definitely an old Empire sprue. I can't remember if it was the old men at arms, like the old state troops. Not the the one which kind of hung around for a bit and you could buy for Age of Sigma. This is like the old ones which had the spears. Or it was the um, it was the knights, the old Empire Knights kit. And if you look at the plastic of that, I mean, you can see it's a lot paler. If I compare it, you can see that. So that is old Games Workshop plastic. That's like early 2000s Games Workshop plastic. That is like more modern day plastic. So there's definitely a color difference there. So I don't think that these are just sprues which have been left in some sort of storage somewhere. Oh, here we go. You can see here. So that is, that's an Empire Knights head. So that's like a closer color, but this is a more recent one, I think. So this is like an old, old one. This is kind of like a mid-range one. So this is, I'm surprised I've still got these. It's kind of amazing. Um, yeah, I've still got a few Empire bits in here from when I used to... Yeah, these are all all my old Empire collection. This is It's, it's probably not super obvious on camera, but you can see this has got a slightly different... Like it's more of a... Um, yeah. That's pretty much all that's left for my Empire army. Um, I don't have an awful lot left, to be honest. Um, Outriders. Yeah, this is this is my old box of, of bits. For when I used to collect Empire. Um, unfortunately, I sold most of my units, so I don't really have them anymore, uh, which is a shame, but you know, it's one of them. I 
Do you find kit bashing to be easier in the 30k, 40k setting versus AOS or Old World from a weapons and packs perspective? Just seems like the future setting have more flexibility. Um, yeah, I, I, I think... So, it's an interesting one, really. 40k is always going to be the easiest one because with 40k, you can kind of go both ways with the setting. You can go... You can lean more heavily into kind of the sci-fi aspect, or you can kind of lean into the grim dark aspect because I you could very easily give these guys um, imperial guard less guns and then just run them as like a feudal guard. It's so easy to do. Um, so yeah, with with forty k, you immediately have you could go back and t you could have instead of having the ordnance batteries, you can just have cannons. You can have so much stuff. But with Age of Sigma gives you some extra freedom. This is not gluing very well. This is the one complaint that I have with these men at arms. They're kind of the way they glue into the the, the sleeves is a little bit of a strange way. You have to hold it for a little bit just for that to gl the glue for set. Um, what was I saying? What was I waffling on about? Oh yeah, that's it. 40k, I think, yeah, you get more freedom. You can do alien races, you can do um, humans which are mutated, and you, you, you can do that in Old World, but I think I don't know, there's a lot more opportunity to do things like that, I think, in 40k. And 30k as well. To a lesser extent in 30k, but yeah, I do think we have... Um, more options in the 40k setting than we do in the old world and everywhere else. Um, I would like to point out though that I where's it? I've lost a I think I lost a, a torso somewhere. Oh, there you go. That's one of my old square base models. The old 20 mil square base. You can see the difference in size as well. Gives you so much more freedom when you're ranking up. Um. Yeah, oh, that was it. So, this is interesting. So, I I do remember, anyone who's a regular stream viewer will remember I said that when the... Um, let's, let's get up. Let's get Firefox up. Oops. Firefox, there we go. So, if anyone remembers when the... Other game... Legions Imperialis. Right. Okay. So, when this was announced and we had the the timeline for a... Oh, where are the pictures? Let's go on this one instead. That's better. So, when, when these guys were announced um, and we had all the pictures and everything was kind of on there and we saw, okay, there's... You, you've got all the solar auxiliary, you've got the infantry, the ogrens, you've got um, the kind of the sentinels and the command squads and stuff like that. And then we also had, on the Horus Heresy 30k timeline, we had a new army release for the winter. And I said, oh, I reckon it will likely be solar auxiliary. Even though there have been rumours saying that it would be um, the uh, Mechanicum, I, I was, oh, look, that's mine. Um, I was adamant I was adamant that they would be um, I'm going to mute that so it's not coming through and then literally we get a nice little trailer which is like okay this is the stuff that's come out this year blah 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 solar auxilia solar auxilia and there is also a marine with a banner and I also said well, I'm just having, I'm just doing the victory lap right now. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> I feel like I just, I said this earlier. And if you look at this, oh, look, it's a guy with a banner. It's the command squad. They said that it was going to be released. And my reasoning was they all had, all of these models had plastic kits that already existed or plastic kits in the works. And so it would be reasonable to assume that these might be the equivalent army for the full scale, full scale stuff. I was right. That's what I'm going to say. I'm just going to. Leave it there. <laughs> anyway. Bring back zombie pirates to the vampire coast. Yeah, I already have my Necrofax Colossus, so I could maybe build 
um, some square base versions of that. The legacy armies look as fleshed out as the official ones and have newer models. Um, yeah, they, I mean, they do. They do look more... F the thing is, I think the legacy ones are more like when... Um, was it 8th edition came out? And they had the indexes. Um, oh, so I, I guess in a way it's a bit like 40k situation 40k now. So at the moment, there's only four official codexes at the moment. There is the Space Marines, Tyranids, um, Admech, and Necrons. So they're the only four codex. Everything else has been given free rules that anyone can play with, but there's not they're not as fleshed out, maybe. Um, there's not as many stratagems, detachments, things like that. So I imagine that what's just going to happen is, as the year goes on, the next 12 months or so, um, and we see the other factions start to um, get their stuff re-released, I just think that we won't get those arcane journals which have like specific rules for the army so you'll be able to run them as a normal army i don't think it's going to be a case of like oh make do with that um everyone else is going to get better rules i do think it's just a case that we're not going to support these going forward but here's some rules so if you have your existing collections or you want to make a new collection using stuff from um age of sigma then you can i think the only it kind of makes sense because if you look at what is available in age of sigma it, it, everything that you can buy an age of sigma version of seems to have been really separated out um if you go through let's have a look case in point and if i if i just um have a look at the rule book here and we go to the section that's got all the pictures so um not so much the elves but this one this is a perfect example of what i mean so if you look in here on this picture um, hopefully, I'm getting everything as much in shot there. Let me get the open up while I get and get sure everything's in focus. So I do think there's, there's very much there's two reasons why this could be the case. So in here you can see that we have um, stone trolls. Now these have um, new models. These have updated models in Age of Sigma. They haven't been. Um, change, but these are the old models. Now, they, this could be for two reasons. It can either be because Games Workshop just didn't want to have to <laughs> rebase some of the uh, the new rock gut troggles. I think that's what they are. Is that what they are in Age of Sigma now? Onto these and, and square base them, just thought we'll dig these out of the archive. Or they're trying to keep a very clear distinction between what is the Age of Sigma and what is the old world. Um, I mean, case in point as well for like the Goblin Wolf Riders as well. I mean, the new Goblin Wolf Riders would be amazing. They're, they're perfect for. Um, old world as well as as well as Age of Sigma, um, but yes, yeah, so you just don't see them. They've got the old ones in here. I think that's pretty much it. I think obviously well, I'm so excited for the the high elf stuff to be to get released as well. Um, I'm really hoping that you can just about see them there, just in the just in the corner there. The um, oh, what are they called now? Sea Guard. I think something Sea God. Anyway, yeah, they were in the black. There was two. There was the High Elf versus Skaven one, which they were in. Loth and Sea God. That was it. And um, I'm guessing someone else maybe. Yeah, there we go. Loth and Sea God. Cool. Um, so they, they they were in like the start set. So I'm hoping that gets released. I think it is it. What was it called now? They re-released it for Age of Sigma for a bit. We're going to do, be doing a lot of back and forth on. On Firefox here now. I do apologize. What was it? There's was, there's was two. There's Black Warhammer Fantasy Starter Set. I don't want the. So when I when I first started, oh, so there's this one, um, Battle for School Pass. I remember this one. I remember this one. And Island of Blood, that was it. I'm sure someone's probably already said that in there. Island of Blood, yeah, cool. So, yeah, this is the. So when I first started Warhammer, this is the first one that was that existed. Um, I'm just going to Google that because I want to see the contents because I think that had Empire and Orcs, if I remember rightly. Yeah, so these are really old. Oh, there you go. You can see literally see the uh, the flag that I pointed out earlier. It was the. What unit was that? Oh yeah, it was the cap. What is that? 
Oh yeah, they had like a generic command sprue, didn't they? That was it. Yeah, so I had that. That's the flag that I pointed out earlier. Um, so this is when I first started. This is what was about. This is what was available. And um, then School Pass came out, and School Pass was dwarves versus night goblins, and that had some really nice stuff in. So I hope that these come back because these have plastic miners in as well. And actually, if I I think those are the, the, if I'm not mistaken, I think those might be the uh, the trolls that were from that set, the plastic ones. And I definitely have seen them in the dwarf section. The miners are definitely in here. Oh, hang on, the miners had their own kit, didn't they? I'm really forgetting what, what was available there. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what was in that kit. There was a, I think it was that. These were the ones, weren't they? I can go mad now. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, I hope that they come back, and then obviously you've got the Island of Blood. Let's let's get a bad picture of that. Yeah. Ah, oh, that was it. Spire of Dawn. So they re-released it, the Spire of Dawn, and then for Age of Sigma, but it was basically just the old Island of Blood. Um, box set. I want to do see the picture. Let me see the picture. Okay, that's better. Yeah, so you got uh, Swordmasters, Loth and Seaguard, um, Silver Helms, I think they were called, if I'm not mistaken. Really cool. Skaven um, characters there. Yeah. So I really hope these come back because I think these are the same. This is very similar to what we have now in terms of Skaven, anyway. I've heard similar that non Games Workshop tournament organizers are going to allow legacy armies. Issue is that these armies won't get any balance updates from Games Workshop, so slowly just get crushed from inevitable power creep. Yeah, I think that, that is usually what happens. Um, I don't think fantasy is going to be as susceptible to it as 40k in Age of Sigmar is. I think just because of the nature that of how they're going to be supporting the game, they're probably not going to want to add all too many models to each each army. Um, I mean, if you think about Britannia, you have, what, two new units that didn't exist, if I remember rightly, in terms of miniatures. Um, so yeah, it, it does depend, I think. Um, Kemri got one model. If I'm not mistaken, one model and then some updated versions, essentially. Uh, the dwarves had the good old Grudge Pony, it did. I am not using the old trolls. I'm going to uh, base my um, GSG trolls on small bases and adapt for Age of Sigma. Yeah. Illyrian Reavers, that was it. That was it, yeah. I should know this because I've played Total War. This is the thing. I think, I, I genuinely think that Total War has had such a positive impact on this game released. I think if we Dragon Princes, they're cool models as well. Just even the fact that all these bits are going to be released as well. I mean, if you think about just the um, the White Lions getting their plastic kit re-release, it's just going to be awesome because we're going to have all these lion pelts that we can use. We're going to have these uh, giant lions. I mean, can you imagine running those in? Um, as bikers in a like I don't know a Dark Angels army that was such a cool cool concept to do um, and I do feel like from from my point of view we lost out on so many cool bits and little items that were were used there was even I think there was one thing in one of the what was it the Astra it was one of the Imperial Guard books I can't remember exactly which book it was but one of the Imperial Guard codexes had a um, example for a um, army. I think it was Miasmin Red Cows or something like that. And they literally used the High Elf archers and then they literally just discontinued them. So they put it in the codex and it was in the codex and it was like printed. Um, but they discontinued the models not too long after. But yeah, there's going to be such cool conversion opportunities with these. Um, so I'm hoping... I mean, even I mean, some of these, the High Elves, I actually think really hold up the best, to be honest. A lot of the new kits got 
stuff got re-released fairly recently. The Spearmen are a little, little bit janky. Uh, Archers are a little janky. The cavalry units look really good, though. Dragon Princes look good. The I think they a lot of this stuff got re-released fairly fairly recently compared to maybe some of the other stuff. I think the Orcs are probably the most dated, in my opinion. I think the Orcs are going to be uh, out there with the, the most kind of dated stuff. Night Goblins, no. Um, dwarves, again, some really nice units which are still in production. Um, I think this is probably one of the few examples that we've actually seen of um, units which are still available as a unit in Age of Sigmar, actually showing up in here and being uh, fielded as a um, a square base unit but again that makes sense these were released originally as that um, the Trogoths were released as part of Age of Sigmar so it could just be that they have what they have in their collection but look at those Slayers really nice really really nice stuff um, yeah look I mean the same goes for this as well look there's a much better Demon Prince now and this is the old Demon Prince in there um, same goes for the Warriors of the Chaos and the Knights of Chaos the Horsemen as well They're, for the, if, if this army there's so much better stuff now that you can run um, really really kind of great army to get into I think this is just because of they've, they've, you've got new Chosen new Warriors of Chaos yeah lots and lots of options but yeah I'm also hoping fingers crossed that we get the old Warhammer Castle re-released that was something that i had friends who had and i was really jealous of them for having them and i would love to have them um also these as well the um the watchtowers the fortified like the, the chapel and there's a fortified manor as well really really hope that we get to see those getting released i think we saw some pictures of them in here um just i, I would love to kit bash with it with something like that that'd be so cool steam tank as well So I actually have a box. So I bought a box of Empire Archers and I was going to use them for some conversions and then I realized actually they don't sell them anymore. So I have I have a box of Empire Archers in my uh, in my garage and I'm literally just waiting to use them. Oh yeah, these are the old um the old Empire Knights as well, which is pretty cool. I think these are still available, aren't they? The Demogriff Knights. That's still available. This isn't. This got discontinued, but the Hurricaneum was still being released which is a strange decision um but this is probably too early for vault the grim i think in the setting i am just waffling i do apologize but i'm just really really excited about um about the old world anyway i have the rule book to hand so if you have any questions about anything do feel free to ask and don't worry about distracting me because i'm just loving talking about old world finally uh wolf Ez, hello welcome I still have that old castle unbuilt. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool model. That is. I remember the box was like just this really kind of epic, red and black and grey and oranges and things like that. It was really really striking. Uh, Demogriff knights. I've never actually built any. I've never actually. Uh, they look really cool and they're really good source of bits. But yeah, I would love to get some more. Question for the old world: Is the empire the old models? Um, yeah, I think I just flicked through the page there but yeah it's basically just the old empire state troops hand gunners um everything like that everything like that question the new plutonium box comes with only one transfer sheet um yes that is the transfer sheet there that you can see just the one um so you get a bunch of these axes and then a few kind of stylized fleur de -lis there as well um i would actually suggest that if you want, to, if if you want Bretonian, um, if you want them, I, I would probably dip into some um, Adeptus Serrata stuff because there's so much that like the the obviously you have all the Fleur de Lis. There's also the um, Probably you could probably use some obviously the chalices, they're perfect for it. Um and I would most likely be dipping into these myself. So yeah, if you if you want some options, those are good options. Um 
What else are good options? I was thinking about this the other day, actually, because there is fairly limited stuff. Uh, Hendy FPS. I'd love for Kislev to get added to the old world. I think it will. I think... So, there was some kind of rumblings that I saw about how they're looking to develop the setting. So, I think what we're going to see is... I wouldn't be surprised if Kis If it all goes well for um, the game. I think if the old world stays successful, I think if it stays profitable for Games Workshop, I think they'll be more than happy to support it going forward. Um, and I think what would be nice would be to see a full new army getting released. I think Kislev would be a really nice army to do that with. Um, and maybe they're kind of looking to see whether or not it's going to be worthwhile doing that because it is, it is a risk. You Basically, they resurrected a dead game, which I say it was dead. There were still people who collected it, still people who played it, but obviously it wasn't. it's dead in the terms of it wasn't making enough money. Um, and from... From the sounds of it, by the end of um, eighth edition, I think it was it was kind of getting it. It wasn't a great game. There's a lot of things that people didn't like, and towards the end times as well, it kind of became Hero Hammer, and yeah. Um, uh, any thoughts on where to get Kopeshes? Um, yes. <laughs> Um, but I think they're probably going to be out of stock maybe for a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you if you want Kopeshes, then this kit is the is the kit to go for because look at that perfect. You can use these saw um, these spear tips for them. Uh, they also come with hand a few hand ones as well. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, temporarily out of stock, but. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully they'll come out. Hopefully they'll come out. The Horde rule was what killed it for me. Yeah, because I, I, I never really was into... So by the time that, it, that Fancy Battles died, I was kind of out of the Games Workshop sphere by that point. So I wasn't really up to date with what had been going on. But since the Old World getting released, um, I've kind of been reading up on what the Horde was. I think it was basically like you could have... It was like a maximum frontage or something, which you could have like a ridiculous size frontage and you could get attacks for as they went back. I can't remember what it was, but it basically meant that everyone just had massive blocks of infantry because it was easier to run it. Um, I'm sure someone in the comments could probably create more of a succinct uh, summary, but I think it, it kind of caused people to have massive units just because it was so much of a benefit to it. And I actually remember when... Um, a few of the rules for Old World. So I actually had this... I've had this book for a few weeks. I had this basically before Christmas. And a few people were talking about the Horde rule because if you look at... I think there was there was a picture or a snapshot of, of information being that had been um, announced. And if we have... Bill Men, there we go. So let me switch it over to tabletop so you can see what I'm talking about. Get it on so I can actually see the camera. Okay, so Billman. Um, special rules. Um, oh, God. Is it on this one? Is it in here or was it in the other one? I thought it was in here, but maybe it isn't. Mm. Horde is definitely back. It is somewhere. I can't remember where it is, but it might be in the, the Tomb Kings one. I remember seeing it somewhere. But it's, a, it's a much... And people were freaking out because they're like, oh my god, Horde's back, game is dead. And it was amazing because it was like people hadn't seen the rules or what it actually meant or anything like that. Um, so it was, it was quite funny just to see everyone kind of freak out about what Horde did. And basically under the new rules, I'm, I, I, I'm not... Like I said, so a unit with this special rule may increase the maximum rank bonus it can claim as determined by its troop type by one. So basically when you're determining who wins a combat by how many um, in, by how many wounds have been dealt with, you get to have rank bonuses and the rank bonus is basically equal to the number of ranks that you have up to a certain number. But if you have a horde unit, you just get an extra one. So it, at most it is a plus one in a combat. So it's a much more of a 
probably a balance rule. It's good for it kind of represents the things that the horde is kind of pressing into the combat. But it's not it's nowhere near as disastrous. And it was just funny to watch people see that horde rule prop up and just that flashbacks to, <laughs> to what it was like. And everyone just freak out. It was amazing. It's quite good. Um if everything goes well for the old world, do you think that do you think that legacy factions will fully return? It's interesting because I wonder if there's a degree of um, internal politics with Games Workshop and why some stuff is getting returned and some stuff isn't getting returned. Um, and I think a lot of that comes to let's see, let's see if I can find the picture on on the Warhammer community because there was I can't remember if when it's been Explorer Games Old World I can't remember if they've been released yet or not mm. does anyone know if the Legacy Faction rules have been released yet or not I can't remember now oh also before I forget um, what what I would appreciate if everyone who's watching this stream currently and maybe watching it in the future if you were to watch my video on um, on building out these unit fillers. I'm just going to mute that. Then, if you could, go down into the little description here and just click this link. This will take you back to this article. It will, but I think, basically, Games Workshop gave me a link, and they said, oh, if you want this link, it will link back to the article if you want to point people in that direction. But I think it's probably, it's probably a tracking link to see what people do. I imagine they're going to see how many... Also, hit the like button as well. Give, give that article a like, because I did write most of this. Apart from like that little bit at the bottom, these are all my pictures um, and everything there. Um, but yeah, I think I think they're trying to gauge what the kind of um, I might be gaming the system here a little bit, but I think they're trying to gauge what this kind of article where they have someone from the community do um, do something and then share it and then they link back. So yeah. If you could, if you watch the video, it's there on the top, and it's also I've also put it there as well. So click on that, or and then when you're on the article as well, just give it a like, and then uh, appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, um, legacy factions. Where where were we now? I want to see the. I can't find the actual link to it. Uh, this is the picture I'm talking about. So yeah. So what do we have? We have Lizard Men, Dark Elves, Skaven, Ogre Kingdoms, Vampire Counts, Demons of Chaos, Chaos Dwarves. Um So I know the setting that they've chosen kind of puts obviously Lizard Men and Dark Elves are very much on the other side of the um kind of in the new world, so to speak, the the Americas, the, the old world equivalent. Um, so they're kind of over that side, out the way. Um, Skaven are they've said it, do exist, but they're kind of currently fighting amongst each other. Ogre kingdoms maybe a little bit too far east, as are Chaos Dwarves. Um, vampire counts are what was it? They were covering or something. I think it was it was Rimba. Um so yeah, you can see them in here. You can see Sylvania in the... Uh, let me guess. I keep forgetting. So you can see Sylvania in the map. Um, so there's, there's kind of... It is there. And they. I think part... Of, I've imagined some of the background in here. Actually, there was... If I... Oh, I'm going to really struggle and find it, to find it now. Yeah, here we go. So this is kind of... This is another reason why I think that Kislev will come back because there's a really nice, decent lore section in here. Um, so you've got like Land of Ice and Snow, Kingdom of Kislev, talks about the Eastern Steps, the Ice Queen, Prince Alexis of Kislev, and you also have Cathay um, getting mentioned in here as well. Obviously, this is the art from um, Total War Warhammer. Look at that. All this nice art that's come back as well. So, this is all the art. There was something which grabbed. I'm. There you go. Just there's just lots of little hints in here, which I think is either a. 
I'm gonna have to find it. So basically, there there is throughout. I should have made a, a mark of this earlier, but through you can see these little little bits in in the the kind of the margins, and they have little quotes in there. And there's one quite a way in the back, and I felt like it. I can't really. It's gonna annoy me now. I'll, if I find it again, I'll, I'll post about it. But there was basically a little bit of like a tidbit. There you go. There's the oh, there's the um, start set artwork from when I first got into Warhammer. So the rune fangs, weapons of the old world. That's going to really bug me now that I can't find it. But it was just a little hint, and I felt like it was a good little hint about what we can expect to see in the future. Uh, but anyway, going back to legacy factions, I do think we'll see them personally. I think they're not going to be focused on yet, and I think maybe that's what Games Workshop are trying to do. They're trying to keep everyone's expectations down because there'd be nothing worse than um, offering a whole bunch of promises for a game that maybe won't do well, won't be marketed properly, and could potentially get discontinued or slowly fizzle out. Um, I think... Okay, here we go. So this is one of them that I found. So the Geomantic Web. The Geomantic Web is a great network of ley lines. Constru Let me just make sure I can. you can actually see that. Yeah, you can. Cool. Uh, a, I, should do, I should be doing my law voice for this one, shouldn't I? <clears throat> the Geomantic Web is a great network of ley lines constructed by the Old Ones to channel magic around the world, powering their world-building engines and maintaining their great enchantments. The sprawling temple cities of Lizardmen were constructed upon points of convergence within this great web. At the center of each temple city, the mighty Slan were able to commune with their masters and, through their mastery of magic, shape the world as the Old Ones wished. So yeah, there's old Lizardmen are mentioned in this. This is this is kind of, there are mentions of these little things. Um, so I fully, fully believe that we will see... Um, those kind of things in the future not anytime soon maybe not for a year maybe not for a year or two um this is the other one okay i found the other one okay um is this the other one no i think i remember what it was talking about though right let me find it now. uh Right, I know what it was talking about. I remember now fully what it was talking about. I do, I do apologize if this is not very uh, interesting, but I think it's quite interesting to talk about it. Ooh, doo -doo -doo, no, not the one. Mark of the Champions. Creatures of the North. There's this one as well. This little line here um, talks about the. Northmen, Marauders, and Giant Mammoths, which would be pretty cool to see. I'm, I'm not going to find it now. I know exactly what it's talking about, so if I can't find it, I will um, I will just summarize what it was. But I would... So Dogs of War mentioned as well. Tilia is known... Hang on. <clears throat> Tilia is known across the Old World as a land of mercenaries. Local legends say that an orc invasion was once defeated when the Tilians hired half of the orc army to attack the remainder. Though how such an agreement was negotiated is unclear. Since then, the use of mercenaries has become ingrained in Tilian culture, and Salsords flock to the nation safe in the knowledge that they will find a commander to sell their services to, be that within Tilia or upon distant shores. So yeah, there's lots of little hints and stuff like this. Look at that. That's interesting. That kind of looks like a little I mean it could just be a little I always I always read into these images far too much to be honest. I think you know that could be like a little. Right, this is it. I found it. And so this is basically I think this is Pete reading from a book. But I think I'm going to read this out, and then I want people to to see if they can figure out what um what I'm um, what they're getting, what I think they're getting at, and what maybe they're hinting at. Okay, <clears throat> engage um, law YouTuber voice. Ancient, primordial forest covers much of the Empire with a canopy of darkness. Roads theoretically connect the far-flung towns and villages, but contact is tenuous at best. 
For protection, a vast network of forts, fortified inns, and watchtowers are stationed along the highways. Patrols regularly travel between stations, rotating garrison duty with other regiments. So, that was the section, just that first bit. And I want to see what people get from that. And I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. I'm going to build some more battalions, and we'll come back to the book if anyone's interested. Um, I just realized I've not been I've been very much ignoring the uh the uh the comments. Oh Thomas Jade, thank you very much for subscribing with Prime. Thank you very much. Hi Pete, when was the last time you played any tabletop game and when was the last time you played 40k Sigma? The last time I played Age of Sigma was December. Um early December, and the last time I played 40k was in November. So yeah, I do play, not very often, to be fair, and I am hoping to get into more, but I will definitely be doing more. Um, uh, Drakwal Patrols, been building a Hockland one for you. Now, there is actually about the... Um, ah, what is it? The Oh yeah, it's richly on the other side of the page. The Stir River Patrol is mentioned as well. It's quite nice. Um, yeah, anyway. I'm gonna, I, I don't think, I think it's very tenuous at best, my, my assumption is. But the fact that there's, this mentions a um, fort, Warhammer fort, fortified inns, fortified mana kit, and watchtower. Watchtower kit. If we do not see, <laughs> if we do not see the forts, I just feel like these little things in here probably mean nothing at all, but I am going to hold on. I am going to grasp at this straw. I am going to firmly grasp at this straw and hope that we see a Warhammer fort get released again, the fortified ends get released, and also the watchtowers and the little chapel as well. Um, random question for you, Pete. How many languages do you speak? I speak um, English to some degree, and I speak a probably about 0.02% of german i think maybe that's maybe that's overestimating it but yeah will you make more unit filler videos like a mini series or perfection in general they give a unit so much character and I like the inspiration for my display units yeah so i i think i will do i think what i'll do is whenever whenever we get a army release i'll probably do a unit filler so if, when when any of so what do we have for the actual main factions we have uh, dwarves orcs and goblins empire wood elves chaos there's one more isn't there there's probably two more anyway for whatever the main factions get released and whenever they get released by games workshop i'll probably tie something in um and do a unit filler to match up with that. I think that's that that'll probably work best. I think people will be most likely thinking about those armies at that time, and also means that I can actually get all of the parts required to do those unit unit fillers. But I will definitely be doing some, um, doing some. What songs do you like to hear while painting? I don't tend to listen to songs. I tend to, um, if I'm painting, I tend to put like podcasts on there. Um, just lots of random things, to be honest. Whatever I'm kind of in, maybe audiobooks. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't really listen to music very often. I think I do like music, but I just kind of have to be in the mood for music. Um, but yeah. Um, hi, curious to what paints you used on Tomb King's Fillers Desert Basin? So I used um, I used some of this. So this is the actual basing. Um, so I applied, I painted the model, and then applied this dry ground to it. Then I applied a very thin wash, like an incredibly thin wash of two thin coats archaic sepia, and then dry brushed it with I think it was. Um, it was some of the pale colors. It was like it went up to trooper white, and I think it was ivory tusk, and then trooper white, if I'm not mistaken. But it's basically that, given like a sepia 
I imagine that color as a as a as a basis, and then washed with um, something a little bit like seraphim sepia, but archaic sepia is is the tooth and coats equivalent. Um, the little rocks they were painted with dry brushing, so I'd basically use some of the color forges spray paints to get the base colors down. So I used their I think the the most lightest color that I use is ossified earth, earth. I think high elves and beastmen, yeah. Those are the other ones I was forgetting. But yeah, I will definitely be doing some more unit fillers. So whenever a new army gets released, I will probably be doing a unit filler as well. Um, and if you will go back onto that article, onto my video, and click on the link to take you to the article, then maybe Games Workshop will come back and, and ask me to do some more in the future. So yeah, please do do that. I would appreciate it. Uh, Sylvania is an imperial province at this point again. The setting is set after the Battle of Halfen, where Manfred was beaten and had to flee. After this, he did go into a long sleep. It really depends how far they take the setting, I guess, because if you think about it, this in the same way as they're approaching the Horus Heresy, it is very much a ongoing narrative. They, 40k kind of has these fits and starts and stops and starts of where the narrative goes, whereas Horus Heresy seems to have been fairly kind of consistent as time went on the narrative progressed and they released armies and things like that based on that so if they approach old world old world in the same way then i would imagine that i think they've all already hinted at there's going to be the siege of prague um which is a good kind of would be a really good way of introducing a chaos faction to fight face off maybe against some like some kiss level units like they could do a really nice big box set with that but we'll see uh, do you paint, build, kit bash things outside of videos and streams? I, I don't as much, but every now and again I do. I did all my arches outside of stream just for me. Um, probably paint those, probably off, maybe on a stream, but I probably would do some stuff outside of that. But no. I used to listen to podcasts while painting. Till recently, I heard a joke that made me laugh so hard. <laughs> I sprayed the airbrush everything besides the model. That's great. Just don't listen to comedy ones. That's what you've got to listen to really dry political podcasts. That's what you've got to do instead. Um, Yeah, anyway, I should probably build some of these. All I've done is like stick arm, like four arms onto people. Um, make sure. That, uh, Shadow two seven five one. Were there any pictures of dirty tree men model from the end times? Uh, the wood elf section. I don't think there was. There were tree men, but it was really old tree men. Um, it was the, the the old metal ones, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just gonna find them now. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, the it's just the old style metal treeman. Um, no, nothing in here about Dirthu and things like that. Not to say it won't exist, though. I think this is, like I've said, I think a lot of what we see in here is basically just the old pictures, the old models that they already had in their collections, which were um, already on square bases. I don't think it's necessarily... I, I, I th don't think we can read too much into this about what is going to get released and what isn't get released. I think a lot of this might just be a case of, oh, well, this is what we had to hand to... Um... I haven't seen questing knights in here, to be fair, actually. Oh, there, there they are. Okay, yeah, the questing knights are there. So yeah, it could be the case that when the rules come out, um, oh, actually, I can check the rules. Let's see what rules we have in the the rule book. Again, I can't show it on screen, so um, I'll just put it on face so you can enjoy <laughs> looking at my face. Um, I, okay, so it's, it's quite a big book. Um, so let's. I've got like it got split up into quite a few parts. So let's see if I can find the part that I want. Um, no, that's that's Britonians. This is Empire. So if you're interested in knowing, I can't show you, but I can tell you about what units are going to be in each army, if you're interested. So if there's any particular armies that you have that you want to know that you've already got units for and you want to know if you can still use it, then let me know. Um, Force of Fantasy... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Close that. Close 
like that. Empire, please. Okay. So let's do Empire. We've had two. So let's, I'll have a quick look at Wood Elf Realms first. So I will talk about what we have rules for. Um, we have Wood Elf Nobles, Wood Elf Mages, Shadow Dancers, Waste Orcas, Tree Men Ancients. So Tree Men Ancients are on 50 by 50 bases or 50 by 75 mil bases, which are. Get a so that is a fifty by seventy five mil base. That is a fifty by fifty mil base. So you can see that. Um, so that might well be tree men coming back. We have we have, we have branch wraiths, which are um, what else do we have? Uh, there's Steeds, Wood Elf Archers, Eternal Guard, Wildwood Rangers, War Dancers, um, Waywatchers, Dryads, Treekin. So Treekin are the one, the metal ones that we saw. Sister of the Thorn, Glade Riders, Wild Riders, Warhawk Riders, um, Forest Dragons, Great Eagles, and Tree Men. So yeah, it, it, we don't have Durthu, but we do. You know what I? Th mm. I think they might well be. Could you? F no, you couldn't. You couldn't fit one of those. You couldn't fit a tree lord onto. You could fit onto those. I think that was the base size of that when they got released. Let's dip into the archive, shall we? Let's have a look into the old archive um, for this release. Let's go into Firefox. Oh, let me just close off that for a second, just so I can log in. Will the Green Knight make a return? The Green Knight does have rules. I think Games Workshop officially have confirmed that themselves, actually. Um, so, let me sign in. We still haven't had any more White Dwarfs game released, which is a shame. Um, and now, we need to find the end times when they got released, because I want to see what size base they came on. If anyone off the top of their head can remember which which edition of White Dwarf the Tree Men got released in, um, the new ones that we see, so there's Islands of Blood released 2010, so yeah, it's pretty recent. Skaven getting released, the new Vampire Count stuff. Um, new Chaos stuff, Dark Elf stuff. Is that all of them? I know, White Dwarfs. Okay, keep going. Oh, it skips actually. That's 2016. So, I'm trying to think when. When was End Times? When did Age of Sigma get released? It was pre this, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely pre this. Stormcast. End of 2014. Okay. Um. Yeah, it kind of goes from 2000, this is January 2014, and then it pretty much skips to September 2016. So there's a whole chunk of White Dwarfs missing from this, I think, which would probably be the ones that we'd need. Um, okay, I do remember the, the originally getting released on an old, on like a square base, didn't they? So Tomb King's release, that's all the new stuff got released. Um, I don't think there is one here, unfortunately. Dreamer was definitely end times. Um, let's see if we can see it. Every time people tend to Every now and again, you could tend to see these old releases from like White Dwarfs, the people, pictures that people have put up. Oh, um, 
There we go. Yeah, new tree men army box rules for Durthu. So that was that issue was from. Oh, there you go. I can't. April 2013, 15. Yeah, so there's. I actually think that that's that's a big base. That is. I can't see what base that is. Oh, actually, you know what? That could be a 50 by 75 mil base. That could be. Yeah, so it's the old version. Yeah, I, I reckon you can use you. I reckon you'll be able to use those. I think they just may. I reckon this model got rebased for Age of Sigmar, and they just don't have a plastic because it looks the exact same as one that you have currently for sale that they have on here. If I go Age of Sigmar, order, Sylvana. Yeah, if if look at that picture there, that is pretty much the same model. Is that one there? Yeah. So what they did is they basically just took the the model, which they'd obviously painted up for this, and just rebased it so they couldn't use it in the uh, the rule books without painting a new one. So I think that's what it is. Seventy five mil by fifty mil for plastic version. Yeah. Okay. So that that means that it, in a sense the the plastic treatment looked to be coming back. I'm guessing that's why the rules say. 50 by 50 millimeter minimum. So that's that covers the old tree men style. So I think if you have um, this style, you can still run them as a 50 by 50 mil. Um, but if you have the newer style, maybe you built it at the end of end times, then you can you can run him on a 50 by 75 mil. Yeah, so tree men. In, in summary to your original question, tree men are still coming. So Empire, that was the, the next one, wasn't it? So let's let's see. Right, um, Empire. Let's go through the units, shall we? So we have Commanders of the Empire, Empire Wizards, Masters of the Knightly Orders, Witch Hunters. These are all characters, by the way. Uh, we have Warrior Priests of Sigmar, Warrior Priests of Ulrich, which is nice to see back. Uh, we have Engineers, and we have... So we don't have the mechanical horse anymore, which makes sense. I don't think we've gone too far into that realm of technology. Uh, so you can still have an engineer, but they can just take a regular... Um, can they take a horse? Oh, I don't think they can, actually. No, they can't take a horse. Um, so we have Empire State Troops, which can be equipped with swords and shields and halberds and spears uh, we have state missile troops which can be equipped with either crossbows or handguns so they're still there free company militia they're coming back um, empire archers flagellants empire great swords um, pistoliers outriders empire knights inner circle knights demogriff knights a war altar of sigmar that's coming back and steam tanks as well um, we also have Griffins as a unit as well, not as a mount, I think. Oh no, that is a mount. Yeah, it's just a monster mount. Okay. Uh, we have great cannons, we have mortars, we also have Hell Blast of Oligons and Hellstorm rocket batteries. Hell yeah, Hellstorm rocket batteries as well. So yeah, anything else? Anything else anyone wants to know about? Pretty much the new bigger base size are definitely in response to AOS minis being larger. There is definitely a level of soft encouragement to use Age of Sigma models alongside released Warhammer Fantasy Battle minis. I think so as well. It also makes ranking up. I think being able to build your models and rank them up in a way which you didn't have to. I remember full well having ranked up models which had been built specifically for their order of the, the unit. I would, underneath their bases, I wrote like a coordinate like 1a and then 2a and 3a and that, that all those would be on the all the a's would be on the front rank and then i would have to build the models specifically um so that they would because their bases were so small so as soon as you had like a little bit of an overlap on the base it just wouldn't work um dwarf artillery and thogrim let's have a look at dwarves okay let's go through the dwarf shall we we have Dwarf Lords, and they can also be on an Oath Stone, or they can have Shield Bearers. 
We have the Anvil of Doom, which is actually not coming on a base, which is interesting. It's going to be um, a yeah. You can you can basically you can't move it. You can move the um, yeah. Once an Anvil of Doom has been placed on the battlefield during deployment, it cannot be moved by its crew during the remaining moves subphase. So yeah, that can't move. We have Dwarf Runesmiths. We have Slayers of Legend as well, and they can be either a Demon Slayer or a Dragon Slayer. Um, and they have their equivalent rules. We have Dwarf Engineers. We have Dwarf... Okay, I was getting confused then. We have a Dwarf Engineer as a character, and then we're on the, onto the infantry. So we have Dwarf Warriors, um, Longbeards, Quarrelers, and Thunderers. We have Rangers and Hammerers, Iron Breakers, Iron Drakes, Miners, Slayers, and they can be either slow, uh, Troll Slayers or Giant Slayers. Uh, gyrocopters and gyro bombers. We also have bolt throwers, cannons, grudge throwers, organ guns, and flame cannons. So yeah. Anything else? Any other? Anything else we want to go through whilst I'm um, going through stuff? Uh, David E, what do you do with all the models you don't use? Do you keep them for kitbashing? If yes, how big is your potential kitbashing mountain pile of shame? Um, it is takes up a lot of space in my um, in my garage. Basically, I have I have tons of these, which are all full of sprues. Um, I have so many of them. I think I probably maybe have 60, 70, something like that. Orcs and Goblins. Okay, let's have a look at Orcs and Goblins. I need to find it now. Right, okay. Oh, actually, it was already on here. That's perfect. This saves a lot of hassle. We have Black Orc Bosses. We have Orc Bosses. Orc Shamans. Goblin Bosses. Goblin Shamans. And Night, Night Goblin Bosses as well. Um... Interestingly, the Night Goblin bosses can also be mounted on giant cave squigs, so you'll be able to use some of the Age of Sigma models for that one. I'm just looking at the, the rules just to see what options we have. Uh, we have Night Goblin Shamans as well. Um, a lot of mounting options actually for different different goblin units um, we have black orc mobs orc mobs goblin mobs nasty skulkers um, snotling mobs and night goblin mobs as well we have fanatics night goblin squig herds so yeah we can basically get the here uh, use the Age of Sigma version of the squigs. Uh, there are also troll mob mobs, so they're common trolls, river trolls, and stone trolls as well. Orc boar boy mobs, goblin spider rider mobs, goblin wolf rider mobs, a lot of mobs. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, re we're gonna take off the mobs. Uh, night goblin squig hoppers. So again, another unit you can use from Age of Sigma. No, not a problem there, I don't think. Um, yeah, they can be either equipped with cavalry spears or hand weapons. So yeah, you can you can basically just arm them in the uh, Boingrot Bounders style as well. What else do we have? Uh, orc boar chariots, goblin wolf chariots, and then we have wyverns. We have arachnorock spiders, and mangler squigs are coming back. That's interesting. 50 by 75 mil base, so that's that size base, don't forget. Um, mm. So, and we also have giants as well. So, I don't think, from based on based on these books, so these are the, the, the Ravening Hordes books, um, and the Force of Order. These don't seem to have special characters in them, they just seem to have generic characters in there so I think the named characters are very much going to be in the arcane tome that get 
get released. I don't think they're going to be like a generic thing that we're going to see across. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to see them in these generic books yet. We have Goblin Bolt Throwers, Rock Lovers, Doom Die the Catapult, and Orc Bullies as well. Can Beastmen, Beast Lords ride a chariot? Let's have a look, shall we? Let's see if I can find the Beastmen on this. Uh, we have Chaos. And are Beastmen next? Yes, they are. Okay. Beastman Chieftain can take a Tusk Gore Chariot, a Razor Gore Chariot. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can have, you can be mounted on a Tusk Gore or a Razor Gore Chariot. Yeah. Anything else whilst I'm in here? Any final requests before I go back to building some models? Rogue Idol is out, I reckon. Yeah, didn't see a Rogue Idol in there, unfortunately. Um, no Rogue Idols this time. Not for the time being. They might come out with the with the Arcane Journals, but I think this is very much a... Um, Yeah, I definitely think that maybe some of the some of the pictures that they've taken that the studio have used for photography has been based on the models that they had in their collection that were in already on square bases, possibly because there's. Then again, the the base sizes are bigger, so maybe not. Maybe that's not as straightforward as I thought. Um, there's a chaos spawn in one of the pictures. I can't show it, but one one of the it's the really old metal chaos spawn, not the new plastic one. And that plastic one has been around for ages. Are Chaos Trolls in the Beastmen or Warriors book? So they're definitely in the Warriors book. Um, I don't think they're in the Beastmen book. We have Gorgons. We have Chaos Giants. Cygors. Cockatrice. Um, no. There are no... Yeah, no, there isn't. Unfortunately. Trolls just seem to be in the, the, the Slaves of Darkness equivalent to Chaos Forces. Any Halflings? I haven't seen any, no. Um, the the moot is mentioned in the background, but whether or not it, it gets anything in the future, we'll see. There's somewhere points for Romulus. There is, there is points. Yeah, all the all the sheets have points, um, but I there's a lot of points to go through, so I'm not going to go and read all those out. Uh, but those are all in the all the points for all the armies are in the um, uh, what they're called, the Ravening Horde and book and the other one as well. Oh, Casket of Souls is coming back as well. That's interesting. and get the, the Chaos Forces up just to see if there is anything interesting in there. Um, yeah, Chaos Trolls and Chaos Spawn and Chaos Ogres are all... Oh, Chaos Ogres! Did they have models before? Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, I remember those. <laughs> <laughs> I completely forgot about the Chaos Ogres then. There's that one that's got the two heads. Yeah, now I remember now. Um, yeah, Chaos Ogres are coming back. That is an old model, like 6th edition. G 
Do you think the Lizardmen will keep the Dread Saurian as an option? It's hard to say. I think it's yeah, it's quite interesting to see what they do bring back and what they don't. But I, I don't think it's necessarily based on the rules compared to what we've seen in the pictures. There doesn't seem to be any issues with people um, taking Age of Sigmar models. Obviously, some of those old models aren't even don't even exist anymore unless they decide to re-release them. So um, yeah. Like I said, tree men do seem to be coming back, so at least we'll see those. But yeah, anyway, let's get back to doing some actual building, shall we? I think that's the... Uh... Uh, Beastmen do still have Minotaurs. Yes, they do. I'm missing a Men at Arms. Um, I should have four. Oh, no, okay. No, I did. I did more than I thought, actually. That did that one. Okay, I need three heads. Perfect. Can you make escape and travel from the future and another universe to the old world? <laughs> yeah. To be fair, I think obviously there's going to be legacy army lists as well if people want to use them. I think they might not be as necessarily as competitive, but I think some people will just like to play their old armies regardless of whether or not they're competitive or not they probably won't see much use in the, in the generic meta but i think as long as tournament organizers are happy with people using legacy lists i don't think there'll be a problem with people fielding lists especially if they're stuff like skaven they still have a lot of the old skaven range is still available to buy even like the really old um weapons teams as well You can even spend a fortune on um, Scryer Acolytes as well. Or Poisoned poison Wind Globideers, as they used to be called. This is the thing now. So everyone's gotten all used to um, using all the Age of Sigmar-fied names of stuff. And then the old world's come. And everyone's got to re-remember what, what they originally they were all called. So these aren't, um, these aren't free guild troopers anymore. These are Empire State Troopers. Um, these aren't what were the other names that stuff has come for that's pretty much it isn't it there's not an awful lot a lot of the stuff now that, that got renamed has kind of disappeared anyway so um, I know the old wood elf stuff used to be called the wanderers didn't they that's what they, that's what they were the wanderers wanderers The current Skaven range is the old range. <laughs> yeah, the the the, the nothing. I don't think they've really received much in the way of, apart from, a few characters. I don't think Skaven have received anything, any new units, have they? I'm not mistaken in that, am I? I don't think they have, have they? They're, I'm trying to think to see if I'm I'm missing anything. I don't think there's any... Apart from characters, apart from single miniatures, there's been no new units of for Skaven released in the whole time that they've been Age of Sigmar. A few Underworlds kits. Yeah, but even then, they're not like proper units, are they? They still have the old... I think the old gutter runners are still available as a kit. The wormholes are Age of Sigmar exclusive. That, that, that is it, isn't it? It's literally the, the gnaw holes and the endless spells. I think that's the only kits which aren't characters which have been released for. And obviously the underworld stuff as well, but they're kind of... They're, they're accidental releases, aren't they? Yeah, because all of the current... I think the idea, obviously, was that they had... Um, the last time that they got updated, we had the Vermin Lord, we had the um, New Skaven. I think that was actually... That's, I'm not going to do much on this, this stream. To be fair. I was expecting to, to be fair. Um, have I got my... 
There we go. Okay, so there was one about Skaven, wasn't there, if I remember rightly. Um, there, okay. January 2011, White Dwarf. This is, this is, what, 13 years old now? That's crazy. Okay, so this is when the Halpit Abomination was released, the Warp Lightning Cannon, Plague Catapult, um, and then a few characters were released. They were already released. Um, okay. So most of stuff must have come out later. When was the... Was the Plague Furnace and the Vermin Lord, were they released later on? Were they released around end times? Or was this like the second? Because they used to split up the releases, didn't they, actually, if I remember rightly? Let's go back. Oh, there we go. Literally, I saw it. it was in Warhammer Visions. I think they ah, this is when Warhammer Weekly came. I think it was a thing, wasn't it? So they've not. I don't think they've released any of the Warhammer Weekly stuff. It's all they have the, the short run of Warhammer Visions. Um, but yeah, this is around the time that um... have I not took, have I gone Firefox? Oh yeah, okay. Just double checking. I actually switched to Firefox. I have a habit of doing that. Um. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, you can see that the square base is that looks like a fifty mil by seventy five mil base. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, the new releases of the Tree Men Ancients. Yeah, so these were these were all like fairly recent releases, weren't they? It's the Wood Elves Guardians of the Deep Wood. Look at that. Treeman Ancient. How much was the Treeman Ancient in? £37. How much is he now? So this was what... What did I say that this was? I should have... This was June 2014. So this is 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Let's have a look. No, tree managing. No, not that one. <laughs> oh, tree lords, aren't they? No, they're not tree men. Forty-five pounds. So it's gone up by seven pound fifty in ten years. Let's look at the UK inflation calculator. Let's have a look. Let's see if we've actually got any. I am. I do apologise for going off tangent once again. So thirty-seven pounds. No, oh, okay. I'm gonna have to. I'm just gonna put thirty-seven pounds in. In twenty fourteen. In oh yeah, November twenty thirteen. You know what? That's not bad. Forty-eight pounds, and it is actually for sale for. I've lost it now. There. Forty-five pounds. Look at that. We are whole, and that's actually if that was. So if I put one pound in there. So we add on, half of that, which is sixteen, sixty, sixty-six pence. Is that right? No, I can't do maths. That's yeah, it's sixty-six pence. So thirty-seven. Show amount. Add sixty-six pence to that. That's forty-nine pounds forty pence. So. <laughs> by inflation standards we're actually saving four pounds that's not that's actually not that bad to be fair i thought it was worse are you converting some plans are you planning to convert some big things like some ship i don't know i might do if there are i, I would like to see something big for um old world I wanted to maybe like a bone giant or something like that but it'd be nice to something even bigger even if it's just like a just for the rules sake it's not even like a um, even if it's not yeah even if it isn't just something which is oh this is specifically for 
Um, look at this visions. This is kind of it was like a weird white dwarf thing, wasn't it? Ah, pretty cool actually. This is when the Halbert kit was released. Yeah, so I was back into Warhammer by this point. By 2014, I think I was back into the um, the whole kind of thing. So I, I remember seeing this. I didn't collect visions though, so a lot of this stuff is actually new to me. Ah, okay, this is it. This is the one with um, Warhammer Vision 13. This is the one where the new Skaven stuff was released. This is February 2015. Okay, so some... Oh, yes, yeah, so that had Thranquil. Um, that had the Vermin Lord. And it had the Plague Furnace as well. What else did we get in this? Oh, this is when we got the Storm Fiends, isn't it, as well? Yeah, that was it. I remember this one. I, I did a really old commission for some Storm Fiends as well. Um, Gracia, the Warlord. Oh, there's a smile got released. Where's the bit where it has the prices? Look at that. Look at those rats. Skaven look really cool ranked up. I think the. It's quite clear that these models were built for the whole ranking up. They're quite compact models. So I think the fact that they obviously transitioned to Age of Sigma and were just on round bases, it doesn't doesn't work quite as well. But maybe, yeah, maybe... Look at these. Basically, these are little unit fillers, aren't they? Little kind of conversions. That's like the Plague Claw um, arm. Try and find the prices just to see, but yeah, okay, that's interesting. Anyway, that was the last time we had a like a, a decent unit or big new thing released for Skaven it was 2015. Um, so yeah, coming up to what was it, February? Nine years overdue now, nine years overdue. A bone giant from Mega Garden, the bargains is not a bad idea. Uh, do you have to have used some wood elves or can you use a Sylvan F wood elf army? This, I mean, this is the thing. I think partly the reason why Games Workshop maybe wanted to keep those armies a little bit more separate is I thought part of, part of it is because it means that they don't necessarily have to do um, the whole thing where they include square bases in all of their in all of their Age of Sigma kits, even though some of the I remember buying one of their direct order, their mail order kits, and it literally still had square bases in it. Which one was it? I think it might have been flagellants, actually. Let's see, I think I ordered some. It was one of the ones when they had these like the white boxes, they did change them there. But I think, yeah, look, still had the old Warhammer Fantasy um, instructions in there. I think these still came with square bases. Yeah, there we go. Came with square bases, which was which was interesting because I think. When did I buy these now? I think I ordered them a couple of years ago. So it's strange that they were still producing square bases with stuff, which was unusually. Um, oh, we have a raid. I just didn't notice that. Um, <laughs> Italian Spartacus is raiding with a party of 24. Welcome, everyone. We are discussing the old world. I'm getting sidetracked a lot with doing various different things. Um. <laughs> yeah, I trust. I have. I have a very. If I get sidetracked with doing anything other than what I'm actually doing, I tend to get distracted from the chat. And I just got distracted by trying to remember when it was I last got square bases before Old Wars release, and it was when I ordered some flagellants. I got a help it abomination a few months back with square base and circle base. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. 
kind of crazy that we still, still saw Square Bases holding on, which means that there was someone at Games Workshop who was still producing Square Bases, even though I think most of the Square Bases that stuff came on, especially for the infantry, that's too small now. I think the, the smallest infantry size now is 25 mil by 25 mil, and those are 20, 20 mil ones. Marienburg Landship stole by Skaven. This could be a great project. I think a Marienburg Landship would actually be a really cool idea, personally. I think I remember seeing some old conversions of them back in the day, but that'd be pretty cool. Maybe like a fix-up of the, the Vortex. I don't know if can Vortex thing. What's it called? I can't what it's called there. great thing about these parts as well is even though they don't have numbers and stuff like that, you don't need them because all the parts are just so simple and straightforward. It's dead easy to assemble stuff. It's like stupidly easy to assemble these units now. Nurgle Champion has a square base. The um, It's interesting as well, because that new Nurgle Champion that, that was released actually had was based on an old world model. He was very, very close to an old um, Chaos Lord model. So it's kind of weirdly come full circle now that we have a... a Slaves Don't Us model being released and then literally getting a model that you could use easily in the old world again. So it's kind of like a, a new plastic old world release, release. I think Forces of Chaos have probably benefited the most from the old world coming back because they recently had so much stuff get released. And it was all very much the case of it's the same as what it was last time, just a little bit better. So you have your Chosen, you have your Chaos Warriors with all the different weapon options um, that you had before. The only thing is, let's check it actually. Um, I've got the list up here. Um... It'd be interesting to see what weapon options they had. Um, so chosen... Oh, Chaos Warriors. Okay, so Chaos Warriors could take... Um, they came with a hand weapon and heavy armor. They could take... A, they can take additional hand weapons. They can take great weapons. And they can take halberds. Um, and they can also take shields. So... The only thing that I can't, I, I don't think you'd be able to recreate easily using the new kit is the dual hand weapons. The great weapons are either, I think they would be tricky. The old, the old Chaos Warriors had great weapon as like a, an option, didn't they? You could, you could equip them with shields out of the, you could equip them with shields and additional hand weapons out the box, if I remember rightly. But the great weapons and the halberds were separate kits, or like a upgrade spur or something like that. So Chaos Chosen Warriors can have additional hand weapons as well. They can have great weapons, and they can have halberds and shields. They're basically the same as normal Chaos Warriors. Oh, they're also on 30 by 30 millimeter bases as well. In case anyone wanted to know, they're on the biggest base size. Um, I think most of the Chaos stuff is at least on a 30 mil base. Yeah, all the champions are. Chosen are. The Warriors are. Forsaken are. Oh, Chaos Marauders. They're on 25 mil by 25 mil. Chaos Ogres, 40 mils. Chaos Trolls are on 40 mils. Chaos Spawns are on 50 mils. Chaos Knights, 30 by 60. And they can take hand weapons or lances, which is 
fits with the Chaos Knights, I think, as well. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> so the intention with these guys, when I actually get around to <laughs> painting these guys at some point, I'm um, I'm going to go for very much a, a straightforward army build. Nothing too complicated. Just nice and simple, just because I won't get an army made. And I would just love to have an old world army, even if it's not necessarily converted in any way or painted up in a particularly wonderful way. I might have some, a few small conversions in there, but I don't think I'm going to worry too much about having maybe anything as, as heavily converted as maybe my Raptors army is. So, what else do we have? We have a few more. Should we do the unit command yet? Or. Mm, I might just kind of build in more men at arms, actually. I think that's going to be the more simple way of doing things. What are we painting? We're not painting anything. We're just, we're just basically building men at arms. And then we are also going to be, um, we're also chatting old world as well. So any any questions that anyone has, if you are new to the stream, um, you've arrived in the last 10 minutes, I think it was the last, since I last started talking about them. Uh, if you have any questions about the rules for old world, be it unit rules, um, what units each army has available to them or generic rules or anything like that, then please do let me know. I have the rule books available to me here so I can have a look through them. If I get into the old world I'll probably play Slaves of Darkness to be honest. Yeah I think in terms of the, the model range I definitely think they're going to be the most um, easy transition. There's just been so many core models you could use. I mean you have the um, the Myrmidons, I think they're called, aren't they? They're, they're kind of like the Minotaurs, but aren't Minotaurs, but yeah. You could easily run those as Chaos Ogres. There's 3 to 15 in a unit. Um, they can have additional hand weapons or great weapons, which are exactly the same as what the Myrmidons can carry. Um, you have a champion, a standard bearer, and a musician, standard stuff. Um, yeah, easy peasy. Chaos Trolls probably need a little bit more work, but you could probably... I don't know, you could probably work that quite easy. Forsaken are probably... You know, I think Forsaken are probably the only one that I can think which is a unit which doesn't have an equivalent. I mean, it's not hard. It's basically just a, com a converted unit. You could quite easily do a kit bash for it. Do Bretonians have squires? Um, yes, I think they do. That vaguely made me remember something. Um, so, Bretonians, 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 Bretonians. Let me grab those. We have... Squires, yeah, we do have squires. They are regular infantry. Um, minimum unit size of five. They have hand weapons and long bows. Um, yeah, they are skirmishers, basically. Open order skirmishers. Yeah. Chosen Knights don't have a model how it's easily converted. Were the Chosen Knights? What well, are the rules for dwarves and could you prox, uh, proxy slayers with fire slayers from Signal? I don't see why not, to be honest. I think um, I think that's a fairly... I don't think it'd be a problem. The weapon options are... Find the dwarves one again. 
for slayers, you have options are... So they all have hand weapons, and you can take an additional hand weapon or a great weapon. So... Yeah, you could probably do it. You could probably do it. Was it Volkite Berserkers, if you took those? Um, I forgot what the basic units are for. Age of Sigmar. I don't really look at Fire Slayers very often. Yeah, so Hearthguard Berserkers, you could probably run as Slayers with, with two with great weapons, and then additional hand weapons, your regular Volkite Berserkers could be used, I guess. Um, yeah, should be easy enough to do. I don't think most people will mind. They, they kind of have that same kind of Slayer vibe and obviously some of the characters as well. If you look at the Dawnbringer's Fire Slayer guy, the main character from that. Um, let's just pop it up on here so you can see on screen. Like this guy is, I'd say is probably one of the closest to old world style Slayers. I think the fact that he's got hammers is probably the biggest giveaway. He's very much like an old school um, Slayer model. He could work well as a either a, a Dragon Slayer or a Giant Slayer. No, Demon Slayer or a Dragon Slayer. And the thing is as well, one, one of the options that they can take is Talismanic Runes. So I suppose you could just say that these runes that he's got at the back there could be counted as. Will you paint Chaos Dwarves in the future? Um, possibly. I think if they saw a re-release, then probably would do. Like, I've, I've already done a Kadai Destroyer for Chaos Dwarves. Um, that would be interesting, actually, to see what the rules are like for those. Because I obviously did a... I did some Chaos Dwarf. That is a point. Maybe I'll do some kit mashing of some Chaos Dwarves. With them getting a new lease of life with some legacy rules maybe maybe i could do maybe i could do some conversions for some uh, chaos dwarves can slayers have axe and hammer so it's just it's not really defined as being an axe or a hammer it's just literally being defined as as being hand weapons so it's not it's not specific the only time it ever really specifies anything is if it's a hand weapon a great weapon uh halberd or a lance they're fairly they've kept things fairly generic which i think is sensible uh david sanchez hey pete uh, uh hey pete love your work man saludos from argentina my lord thank you very much hello i did do a chaos 40k chaos dwarf i did a video on that one i used the new votan um chthonian berserks to do a uh chaos dwarf which was pretty fun Try not to worry too much about the uh, the mold lines on these guys as well, because, like I said, these are going to be ranked up, and you're not going to notice these mold lines quite as much. So I'm not going to be quite as particular, I think is the word, <laughs> with these as maybe I would be with other stuff. But uh, yeah. Green Knight kit bash, possibly. I think I have some idea. I, I've got some plans for doing some um, Grail Knights kit bashes and then maybe some Questing Knight kit bashes as well. Um, the Grail Knight mainly be being because I do actually think that the Grail Knight kit is actually quite expensive from Games Workshop. £36 for three is pretty pricey. I think even 
I think even by kit bashing standards, I actually do. I think I could possibly get away with building converted ones for less. Because if questing knights are the same as grail knights, pardon me, in terms of pricing, I actually think yeah, I could probably get away with building more. If we if we base Let me just quickly check what the prices are for some of the equivalent units from Tomb King. So if we go on Old World, um, Old World Cavalry. Let's see what we've got. So uh, Pegasus Knights are thirty-seven pounds fifty for three plastic models. Support Stalkers are thirty-seven fifty for three models. So we don't really have anything that's like an equivalent price, I think, for cavalry. Chariots, maybe? No, Cetra the Imperishable, £35 for a chariot. Monsters, Necrosynx, War Sphinx. Yeah, nothing really. Nothing really that would hint. I would say, personally, based on the fact that Tomb Guard are £47.50 for 20 models. I would say that Bretonian Knights of the Realm are going to be about a similar price, I think. Maybe not. Maybe cheaper. We'll see. 47. So that is still... So I have... If if we say that they're £47.50 and you get 6 and the Grail Knights are £36 for 3, that is £72. So that gives me a whole £15 worth of, of kit bashing room to build. I think I could do it. I think I could do that. I could build, I could kit bash something and save money with it. I don't do that very often, to be fair. Most of the time, it just ends up making everything a lot more expensive. Um, but yeah, no, maybe, maybe I could. Maybe that's a challenge for me. Can you save money by kit bashing? Fifty pound for twenty knights. I think you only get. So if we go off what we get in the box set, um, I don't think I've got any pictures of it without showing the whole box. Oh, it's actually on the website. What am I doing? Um, so if we go off the um, Old World Kings of Britannia, so the box comes with um, 12 knights. I think twelve for fifty pound might be pushing it. I don't. I wouldn't expect to see twelve of those for fifty pounds, personally. I don't know. I mean, possibly it is possible. I think six for thirty-seven fifty is about reasonable. No, not Fortnite's. Um, I'm talking about Knights of the Realm. I'm going to do some. I'm, I'm going to kit bash some Grail Knights, but I am going to use. Um, I am going to use Foot Knights. I was going to say twenty. I, th I think I think Foot Knights about the same price as, um, Grave Guard, Tomb Guard, not Grave Guard. Old World. Infantry. They're going to be the same as that. I think. I think it's going to be forty-seven pounds fifty, and you get twenty. Just checked an old order for Grail Knights in 2016. It was five knights for 59 euros, now 47 50 for three. Grail Knights are 47 for... Grail Knights are the same price, the 37 50 for three, which is about the same price as the uh, other ones. Yeah, these are pricey, aren't they? 52 pounds 50 for a Shabti. How much are they? How many, how many points they are? Let's see how many points a Shabti are. How many pounds per point do we have on these guys? Um, we'll go for the cheaper option. We'll give them the benefit. <laughs> um, what are we what are looking at? A Shabti. Okay, a Shabti with... Oh, they're the same. Okay, so a Shabti are 49 points each, and an Ancient is Plus seven points. So a unit like that is a hundred and four points. 
That's right, yeah. 104 points. So it is... That's that's actually a really bad exchange rate. <laughs> it's a pound per two points. Oh no, no, tell light. That is a hundred. There are a hundred for a unit. Is a hundred and um, yeah, a unit is a hundred and forty-seven points. Put one hundred and fifty-four points. That's how. That's how much they are. Hundred and fifty four divided by fifty two fifty. So nearly three points for a pound. It's a good deal. <laughs> oh god, that is terrible. Necropolis stalkers, yeah, they they're a lot cheaper. I think the bows are going to be the biggest option, biggest problem with those. It's interesting though because I'm quite enjoying looking at the prices of stuff and then seeing how it matches up with inflation. Because what I've found so far is actually most stuff is in is pretty much in line with inflation, which is kind of surprising really because I would have thought it would have been more expensive now. But I think it's just the perception of it. I don't know if it's just because everything's more expensive, and I don't know. It's hard to say. Let's have a look, see when the Tomb King was released in White Dwarf. I think it was in a regular White Dwarf when they they were the white ones, like the, the white cover ones. There. Okay, so this one, let's have a look. Let's just see if we can see. I think this is, might have been the one the Tomb God were released. So this was 2011. So if we get the setup for 2011, obviously this is the UK, so this might be might be different. Um. Right, okay, so this is when the crop of stalkers came out. Camry and okay, Camry and War Sphinx. Let's have a look at that one. So that was at release. Thirty one pounds in two thousand eleven. So if we pop in thirty one pounds in here. Forty three pounds and seventy pence. Currently that is for sale for Forty-five pounds. So that is one pound thirty above inflation currently. Now you could argue that it's on a bigger base now, so you do get a slightly, you do get a slightly bigger base. So you get slightly more plastic than you did back in two thousand and eleven. Um, okay, so that's those uh, Necropolis Knights. Let's see how much they were. They were thirty-three pounds and fifty pence. So pop that in the old inflation calculator. Oh, I can't do. I can't do. F point amounts unfortunately so it's 46 pounds and 52 pence so if we go back to these and we search for cover that is about wow that is actually they're a lot cheaper than they should have been so there's the 37 pounds 50 but they were probably they would have been more because they were 33 pounds 50 pence so let's just let's just round that up to 47 pounds just for argument's sake so they're they're about ten pounds cheaper than they would have been equivalent back in the day. I quite like doing this. I think it's quite interesting to do this. Okay, Tomb Guard. So these are twenty five for ten, I think. You know what? I think these are these are a lot cheaper as well. I'm I'm guessing you got ten. Let's see how much. It, yeah, ten models armed with either hand weapons or halberds. What were they? Twenty five, did I say? Twenty five pounds. Show amount. So they should be thirty five pounds. So seventy pounds they should be. Maybe more. Let's say seventy for argument's sake. Currently they are forty seven fifty. Yeah, so stuff is not too badly priced, the plastic kits at least. Tomb God are cheaper now without inflation. Yeah, I mean, £47.50, even without inflation. They, 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 but, like, that's a big difference. Those should be 
if inflation, I'm, I'm people are going to say, obviously, I understand that these are all kits, blah 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 blah. But I think in terms of back when these kits were released, I think a lot of people need to take a moment to realize that the cost of kits back then, um, yeah, inflation's gone crazy recently, which has probably skewed things. But I would imagine that that's probably reflected in the cost of these. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's very interesting. The magic cards were cheap though. Look at that. Three pound twenty five for magic cards. Lovely. What else do we have in here? I don't think we have the price we probably won't have the prices for anything else because nothing else was released. Look at that full breakdown of the sprue. I remember these. These were really cool. Like, how did they do these? They literally have to paint all these parts separately. That's a cool model. What is that? That's really cool. It looks like some sort of... It's, it's definitely not the war thing. What is it called? I can't remember what it's called. You know what I mean. That one. That's the little one. That's a cool model. That would be really cool to build. Lich Priest is nine pounds is crazy cheap. Price of tracked inflation, but the outset cost for those sculpts will be long laid off, so the margin is higher, I'd assume. Yeah, I think I think so, but I wonder if it's a case of it, it's a strange one to to factor in because is someone who is currently base is currently making their own their own kit and is kind of seeing how all the stuff is getting made in the background. Um, there, I, I would actually say that the, the mold making is expensive and the money that I've raised through the project is, is pretty much the bulk of the cost to get those kits made um, if you factor in the money they're about to pay for a sculptor and everything else then it's probably the bulk of the cost but I actually think that I would say that the cost of producing something like that for games workshop is probably quite high in terms of the initial layout cost because you've got obviously the, you've got the the fact that they're working with a lot more people so there's obviously everyone's wages you've got to pay for and everything else based in the uk so there's a lot of the expenses that you have in the uk you wouldn't have in other countries for example um and yeah so it's quite interesting to see how how that would factor in but you still have to produce those kits and i think as well from games workshop's point of view if they're if they've got limited production capacity and they have to maybe take off their space marines from being produced or one of their other kits from being produced well that's they're kind of like having to almost take a risk with the cost there because they could potentially lose out on money on stuff they could sell in making stuff that that's going to sit on a shelf and gather dust for years um which is probably why everything has gone out of stock to be honest because they've pretty much been like well we don't want to spend a ton of production remaking all these old kits and then no one buy them so it's probably why a lot of stuff is um although this is still in stock which is good um but yeah that's interesting If Games Workshop made new troop models for Tomb Kings, I would have picked up that box. But I feel like Bretonians hold up much better. I agree. I think Bretonians do hold up much better. Um, and I think that any... The, well, the reason why is... You, it, um, let me grab this. Let me grab the box. So we have, um, we have, so this is the old skeleton sprue. Um, this is like the generic skeleton sprue that they used to have for pretty much 
Vampire Count and uh, Tomb King. So what's the date on this particular sprue? So this one is 2005. So it's actually not as old as I thought it would be. I thought this one would have been an older sprue, but I think 2005, I mean, I was probably, yeah, I was definitely playing. I think this got retooled or something. The old skeletons were a lot worse, but these are like, look how big the size of these heads are. One thing I actually think would do, the, the Camry stuff is a lot better. This was stuff was 2000, hang on. What is going on with this? <laughs> what? So, okay, according to this, this is a 2005 sprue, okay? This is a 2002 sprue. So this is the, the um, Tomb King sprue. Now, if you look at the hands on this one, right? And then you look at the hands on this one. Can we get them on the camera at the same time? That's a big difference there. If you look at the heads as well, the heads are so much better on the, uh, the Tomb Kings one. It's hard to compare them up properly, but yeah, you can see there, look how much better defined the Tomb King's head are compared to the, the old skeleton ones. This was Apparently this was redesigned in 2005. I don't think it was. It must have been like one of those weird sprue layout changes that they used to do. Yeah, this is older than 2005. This there, there must have been at some point some sort of like... Because they used to do that, didn't they? Every now and again they would redo old sprues and pretty much keep the old stuff the same. And then just maybe add a few extra little bits in there or maybe retool it a little bit. But yeah, this is the old... These are definitely old skeletons. I don't think there's any arguments about that. This is the... Yeah, because this is the, the actual Tomb King's spruce. This has the heads on there. This has all of the the shields and stuff that you need. So you still have to use a few generic heads, but I think, to be honest, I would probably swap them out with um, Citadel Skull heads, to be honest. I think the Citadel Skull heads will look a lot better. Let's um, get the focus on that. I mean, look at that one. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> So, as, as a comparison, as a, um, this is the difference in skulls. I mean, I should probably compare them to maybe the, the, the skeletons, but look at that. What a difference. <laughs> How far skull technology came in 12 years. Yeah, I think the, the trouble is that these skulls might look a little bit too small on these torsos. I think that's the problem. I think it may be in, uh, not too bad. Let's clip one off. Let's clip one and just, just one of the skulls off. I'm going to keep everything on the sprue for now because I'll lose it otherwise. Those kind of skulls were retooled, same ones as the nice. Yeah, I thought so. It seemed very, I, I don't know what retooling went on though. Uh, you know what? It's It's... It kind of suffers from kind of small head, but I reckon you could make that work. That's, have I got tweezers I can hold it on? I got my fingers all in the way. Oops. <laughs> Such is the power of Nagash. <laughs> I've lost the head. It flung off, and I've lost it. I'm going to have to clip another one off. Because we've got tons of these. Um, yeah, you know what? I actually might swap out the heads. I might use these um, thingy heads instead. These Citadel Skull heads. At least, oh my god. It's so fiddly. Okay, that's better. Okay. Like, I'd have to rejig the where is it but I think that's that could work it's not it's maybe a little bit smaller than you'd expect but I don't think it's too bad how is the Tomb King Bone Dragon it, it looks like some, yeah it's really nice it's kind of like a how Tomb Kings should be basically it's really really nice kit yeah you know what I think I think yeah, if you wanted to, you wanted to kind of avoid the heads, which is probably going to be the most notable aspect of them. I think you should just basically switch out the old, the, 
Tomb King heads. I mean, look at the difference in that. That is... The head kind of looks like a... It kind of looks like a waxwork, a really bad waxwork of a celebrity. Like, this is the actual generic, the genuine deal, and this is, like, the really bad kind of Brad Pitt. There we go. That's sort of like a good, a good comparison between the two. What is going on there? I understand. I mean, I'm not going to say I could sculpt any better than Buck. Wow. What a difference. Um, anyway, so those were the... that That's the screw that you get. The, this one is, is better, to be honest. It's not, it's not amazing, but it is... It's better, basically. Um, yeah. What else do we have in terms of Tomb King sprues? We also have the very old cavalry. So this one is 2002 as well. But again, this has the really big heads on there. The cavalry, really, really big heads. Um, the actual... I don't think those look too bad, though. I don't think they're the worst. I think it's the heads. The heads and the hands are the worst things. But other than the torsos, they kind of hold up, to be honest. They're not too bad. Um, these are interesting. Nineteen ninety-three. I was two years old when this was released, and I'm I'm thirty-three next month. <laughs> So, this is how old we are looking at these. 31 years old. Wow. <laughs> By the spirit beer. Going to use Black Knight horses. Could be worse for us. The, to be fair, they're actually. I think they've done a really good job. I think from if you look at the conversation that the um, let me, they're, they're not the worst. To be fair, I think they're a little bit softer in the details around here. Maybe like they're obviously very kind of basic in terms of their detailing. There's not much in the way of, but I mean they've got hollow. They've got hollow ribs, and obviously when you put the two together, that fills things out. Um, Nice and basic, though. I mean, you could assemble a ton of these really quickly. Look at that. You just have to trim down the mold line on the edges and then glue it together, and then you've got a whole horse done very, very quickly. Um, they don't even come in a sprue. They just come in a baggy. The, <laughs> the two King Skeletons just drink a lot of milk. Uh, they were made for older plastic. My original ones were bone-colored plastic. Wow. I've got 60 Vampire Scout ca ca vampire Count Scallies all painted. I was thinking of doing Tomb Kings of Albion or something. Could be done. Could be interesting. Um, those all the kits painted with Noto. I agree. They build really quickly as well, to be honest. Like I said, the long, the, the, art, the peasant bowmen, that's two parts. That is literally a head, and then the whole rest of the body is a single part. And it looks pretty good. Considering that, I'd have to go into a mold, obviously not including the head. And there's a few extra items if you want to stick some... I mean, look, I'm, I'm going to say, though, look, these are... Let me find the sprue. There is an amazing bit of detail on one of the sprues that I want to point out. Um... Look. The command sprue is a little snail. <laughs> a little snail with eye stalks. That's really cool. That's such a cool little detail. I don't think you find these kind of things in, in kits now. And it is one of the things I miss where you have these little things like there's a little lock box and there's a little shield with a knife and a tankard with a with a, a fleur de lis mug and a hatchet and a stump. This is for the banner pole. There's a little hunting horn. Um, little lamp. Little dog. Tiny little dog there. Um... Yeah, and then each of the individual men at arms sprues also has extra stuff on there. So you have a helmet, spare helmets in a pouch. There's a little, little there's a little um, bird in a pouch, and a little pigeon, messenger pigeon, and what looks like a another pigeon, although well, it's a dead one. Um, a rabbit, court rabbit, little kind of 
potion bottle, flask, a pouch, spare cudgel, spare axe, a glove with a little fleur de lis on it. This, honestly, I think the men at arms fruit is really nice. I definitely think the, Br the Bretonians have probably held up better, but I'm really, really pleased with these. This is why I actually have gone out and just thought, you know what, I'm just going to build it. I'm actually really surprised how well these look good. I kind of thought that a lot of this was maybe... Um, It was maybe just my nostalgia, thinking, oh, these they were really cool models and things like that. But they, they actually are really cool. They still hold up really nicely. And like I said, the you can see the stuff that I painted up on, on the Britannian cart. All those little equipment bits are from old kits. They're not new stuff. The only thing is... Let me grab it. So you can see, so all this is old sprue. All this is from the old kits. This is the only, this is the only thing which is probably AOS specific. This is from the Bone Tide of Nexus. The the car, obviously, if you watch the video, you know. But all the car is from uh, Plague Furnace, which is technically technically was released in the uh, for the old world. Uh, well, Warhammer Fantasy Battle. But yeah, all these are from the Britannia. And they they actually hold detail really nicely. Wash in a few highlights and you get the details coming up just as nice as you would do in the newer kit. This is obviously a lot more newer kits in this one, but I don't actually think there's they don't stand out from each other. Once they're painted up. Yeah. AOS has a few, uh, a few little greebly bits on sprues. It does, but not as many. I feel like it's something they seem to have moved away with. It's like I was building some... Um, I was looking at the Imperial Guard sprues, and they're, they're, they're sprues that they used to have. Didn't have a lot, to be fair. They used to have like a few pouches and uh, equipment items, but a, a lot of stuff now gets sculpted onto the model, and I think that's just because Games Workshop wanted to make the models look more dynamic and make their equipment look like it, it moves with their pose and stuff. But there's... I feel like in some kits there is definitely a, a degree of moving away from all those extra little bits. I mean, look how much sprue space there is, though. I mean, if you look at how much empty space there is on that sprue, compare that to a compare that to a for, like a modern day sprue. There's literally no space. I mean, there's obviously a lot of these um, kind of channels and stuff like that, but I mean. There's no there's no empty space there, is there? I mean, that's, a, that's already a sprue. This, this, this is a better example. I don't think you would see that kind of sprue configuration in, in modern day. If this was a modern day kit, you'd probably have this in about five sections, <laughs> just spread out across the sprue. Uh, these would all be two parts each, um, and then all the shields would be two parts each, would be hand and a shield, yeah. The skeletons were January 1991. That means then the skeletons are older than me because I was born in February 1991. So these, at least, um, where's that sprue? So before this was retooled, this this sprue is this is design of skeleton head is older than I am, about a month older than I am. That's crazy. Kabuski, you know, Pete, I must say it's rather surprising you're pretty much the only pure kit bashing channel on YouTube, and I really appreciate that you're providing the very specific content that I want to watch. <laughs> uh, you're very welcome. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's still quite a few people who do, who do kit bashes. I think I may be only one of the ones who is like one of the, one of the, bigger channels i suppose that does it um there's there's quite a few small channels which small channels which which are heavily kit bash um so i think recently i know i know darren from uh, we paint minis is kind of pivoted mainly to do kit bashes his more recent content is, is, is quite considerably kit bashed stuff uh, there's a lot of scratch bashing channels i think that that tends to be more common I think I think
Mic volume's pretty low. Um, you know what? I've literally got the mic on full here. Uh, maybe we just have to speak a little bit closer. It's yeah. I've literally got it. I've not even got it any adjusted. I can't really do much about anything, unfortunately. It is unless I speak louder. That's the only way I can do it. I can I can also adjust the music a little bit just in case that's masking it. That's not not a big thing to lose. I have to say I do prefer the old layout. I don't like having to look through the instructions to find the set of legs that fit with the right body. I agree. One thing that's been really nice about one thing that's really nice about the the men at arms sprues, I've not actually had to look at a single instruction on how to build them. I just looked at the sprue and be like, okay, the arms go there, the heads go there, the shields go there. Easy peasy. Very simple, very, very simple and straightforward. Um which, to be honest, I think for like an army, for an army builder kind of style thing, that's all you want. So, interestingly, if you look at, I'm going to go off on another tangent here, but I promise I'll be really quick. Um, <laughs> so, if you look at the. Um, No, it's not this one, the Pauline's Wars. If you want a really nice kind of old style vibe of, of kit, they have... So, I don't know if they release any more in this range, but basically War Games Atlantic released this army builder range, and what they mean by army builder is it's literally just designed very, very simple, straightforward models, and all it's designed to do is you assemble them quickly, and then you can build an army. And that is literally the sprue. So, all the models are entirely built the only thing you get is a choice of heads and then you get a few extra items and that is it so it's 25 pounds but even though you're only paying 25 pounds yes you are losing a lot of the equipment but you can build 60 models for 20 25 pounds which is kind of crazy i mean if you compare it to the rifleman so this one you don't get as many you get um how many did you get 32 so you get half the number but you do get more options on this but even so it's not super heavy on the options and I think Warlord Games and War Games Atlantic I think have really leaned into that style that Games Workshop used to do where for your base basic rank and file models there's no point going too heavy on the details because it'll get lost in the horde which I think is a nice it's a nice design aspect to take on I think it's it's lost a little bit it's, the stuff's really nice the detailed still it's just not super complex you also need hundreds of dudes for napoleonics yeah you do and i think this is um that's obviously why it's it's a really good kind of design aspect aspect to take on i think in my experience as well a lot, a lot of the war games at land a lot a lot of the war games Napoleonics are very, very straightforward in terms of their um, unit options as well. They they keep things nice and straightforward, which is which is good because if you want big blocks of infantry and rank and file, first of all, if you if you have them nice and kind of upright models where there's no arms or spears or guns or anything like that hanging over the edges of your bases, then it means you can rank them up really nicely. Um, but as someone mentioned earlier, I do think that. The whole change of going to bigger bases has possibly been in response to the helping things to rank up. I don't think games were particularly great at making sure that their models designed for an old world setting, which intended to have them on twenty five mil bases. I don't think it was a, it was fantastic. You look at the old Warriors of Chaos; they're pretty good. They're kind of like nice and bulky and squashed up. But then you look at the State Troopers. I mean, it was it was literally. I remember building those. It was such a puzzle to put together any of any of those models because they were very dynamic in their pose. They had they they stretch right across the base. I mean, you can see one here. How are you supposed to rank up a model, which, when you've placed it as as much on the base as you possibly can? The sword overlaps, if I put that vertically, so you can see, the sword overlaps the base in two sections. If you add any extra stuff to it, and then a shield. 
So you have like basically three edges where you're overlapping, but then it's right up against the edge of here as well. So even if you have another model behind it overlapping, it's like it didn't work. This is this is one that my one of my brothers ended up painting, I think. This isn't even my my paintwork there. But yeah, it's like look at that. <laughs> I think I specifically probably built these to handle that, but yeah, it's it's not it's not great. These aren't really ranking up great. That doesn't go together well. You can see that that yeah, these were not designed very well to go together. Old Empire spear uh, troops with vertical spears were better. They were, I agree, because they had a spear which went up right. They had. A, did they have the shields sculpted on? I can't remember now. I don't think they were, but they were like really quite tight to the chest, weren't they? So we had so much more. The skeletons were nineteen ninety nine. The older plastic scanners, which are smaller and went with the horses, might have been ninety one, but I can confirm them from ninety three onwards. Okay, that's interesting. Black orcs were the worst I dealt with for ranking up. People complain that new models are less dynamic, but I assembled. 56 part high elves and they all look just the same anyway I'm getting some reavers to start my raptors army any tips I actually think that reavers are a great um, a great kit for, for raptors the only thing I would do with reavers is find as many patches as you can for them um, and cut away the little chest symbol as well I think that's probably the best thing to do with with um with reavers because I think they're pretty much they're pretty good on their own I don't think there's really much you can do to improve them to make them good for raptors I personally wouldn't do all that much what I will say for reavers though is if you take them with let me think now Let me get the rule book. So the way that the rules work now for Reavers is that you can take both of their options. You can take their um, you can take their grav shoots and you can take their grapnels. So you can't do these aren't multi like um, mutually exclusive. So you can take both of them. So if you build a Reaver squad, I would build them with a personally. If I was to add Reaver, I'm not saying you do this. I would add in a Reaver squad. Let me think about this now. So yeah, I would have a Reaver squad with um, the combat knives and the special issue bolt pistols because they both have precision, as you can see there, which means you can target enemies. Then I would give them a... Find out which, which exactly one it is before I cement my... Um, not the Captain of Phobos armor... I think it's the lieutenant in Phobos armor is the one I'm thinking about. I've probably gone past him. Yeah, so not the lieutenant in Reaver armor. You don't want that one. You want um, this guy. Lieutenant in Phobos armor. Okay, so you, you get your Reaver squad. You get this guy. You attach them to him. You deep strike them because this guy can deep strike as well. So that means you have to be set up more than nine inches away from an enemy. But you get these, you deep strike at the end of the movement phase. So that means you can shoot. So you can shoot them. Should be in range, which means you get your uh, special issue bolt pistol, which means you can do precision hits, which is, as you can see there, it's not too bad. It allows you to take out unit leaders and characters. But then you can do strategic dispersal. In your shooting phase, after this model's unit is shot, if it is not within engagement range of one or more enemy units, it can make a normal move of up to d6 inches, which means you roll a dice, however many inches you get, let's say average of three inches, you move forward towards the enemy, and now you're in a six inch charge range. So you can do a charge in the combat phase. So you can literally deep strike, shoot an enemy, and charge them. And they're not bad in combat either. You've got this guy who's, if you give him a paired combat blades, he's got sustained hits with five attacks, hitting on fours. This has become a 40k combat lesson, but yeah. Reavers, a Reaver squad deep striking with a lieutenant in Phobos armor. A 10-man squad is pretty pretty fun. Anyway. Oh, 
Also, surely the answer for the worst monotone rank has to go for classic squig hoppers. I think the new ones might be interesting on uh, people using the uh, the new squig hopper models in Old World. I think the best thing to do with those would be to remove them from all the plumes and just have them so they're more kind of static on the bases. I think that would look a lot better than having them like really high up. I think they work well for Age of Sigma when they're like really, really bouncy. Um, but I don't know how well that would work for ranking up, personally. <laughs> right, what have I cleaned up so far, this one? Why does Games Workshop have a magnetic attraction to the planets? Um, I think I think they're they're a nice and easy way of making a thema semi thematic model. Um, but they're also quite good, and I actually quite like the rules for for a lot of them. I think they're a good way of adding a little bit of extra oomph to your base units without adding too much extra points values. Um, <laughs> really fun fact fun that the Brits took the word the French Lou and said right that's pronounced left <laughs> it's probably one of those things that came from like a dialect I reckon There's probably it's one of those strange things isn't it where a modern day word might sound like it's pronounced one way but it actually was originally pronounced a different way or yeah it's quite interesting to see how words progress it's like the, the whole thing with uh, i mean i don't know if this is i don't know if this is apocryphal but how a lot of words which begin with like so so when you're saying you would say an apple you wouldn't say a apple you would say an apple um but apparently there's like a lot of words used to actually begin with an n so an apple would be a napple or an adder would be a nada, and then the the words just changed, and it became a lot of like words that began with a. I don't know how how correct that is, but it's something I heard. I think it might have been on QI actually, which is probably where most most <laughs> random facts known by British people tend to come from. Um, dear, how Pete? Uh, hey Pete, how is your Raptors army coming? Well, well, there is actually a new addition, and because we're nearly coming up to the end of the stream and it's gone very quick I actually it's a, it's a nice little reward for everyone who's stuck to the end of the stream pretty much um I'll, i'm going to give you a preview of the next medal for the raptor summer so a lot one of the characters that have been uh people have been asking me to do a lot and i don't know how to pronounce the name properly but it's lias Isidon, Isidon, who's basically the chapter master of the the raptors and i thought it'd be interesting to have a captain in my army so i've basically done a little conversion which is in the process of painting up. So this is a is going to be the captain of my Raptors army. I've not done any characters yet, so it's still being painted, but um, I've got like a little kind of cyber. You can see it a little bit more easily there, but it's like a little cyber um, raptor, basically, as his, his little, instead of a servo scum. So yeah, he's basically, the character's got like a special issue um, bolt rifle which is effectively a sniper rifle so I've just given him eradicate a sniper rifle um, particularly pleased with his little splinter cell-esque night vision goggles that I've uh, that I've borrowed from the Votan so that's that's like a nice little treat for anyone who's stuck with the stream until the end or anyone who decides to watch the, the VOD playback of this on YouTube and watches all three hours of me waffling on about the old world um, but yeah so we are literally in the last five ten minutes of the stream now so if you have any i'm going to start stop tidying up some of my stuff um but if you have any questions about last minute questions about the old world like i said i do have the um the books so if you have any questions and want to know anything about them then speak now or forever hold your peace or at least until next week or the week after when the books get released to the public
Um, Peter Wargan, where do you see you found your Splinter Cell night vision goggles? Because that looks sick. That is, they're from the um, Votan Thunderkin. They have four in a kit. They're not all the same, but they all have the kind of like the night vision goggle style stuff. So yeah, if you need to have those, then do, do, do. What is the best faction and why? Are we talking about Old World? I assume that you are because I'm not going to have time to ask. I would say... I like my Britannians, but then I think from a from a range of models which actually looks good at the box, I think Empire can't go wrong. They're still most of the sculpts will pretty hold up for that. Chaos is pretty good. Beastmen probably still better, but I like the Britannian aesthetic, so I'm going to say Britannians. Um, will it be possible to make a minus one only force for Old World? I do not believe so. No. Um, Without going too much into the the rules here, I think let me double check. I'll make a quick check. There is limitations on. I mean, there might be special lists and stuff like that that you can possibly look at. But so you can have you can have fifty percent of your army's value maybe spent on minotaurs. So you could have half of the army's minotaurs. You would have to have at least twenty five percent as um, Gores, Ungores, Chaos Warhounds, Razor Gores, or Tusk Gore Chariots. Um, yeah, those, those classes are core traits, traits. Oh, you can take, though, one Minotaur. If your general is a Doom Bull or a Gore Bull, you can take one Minotaur herd, maybe taken as a core choice. So actually, you, you you might be able to do it, depending on how much a Minotaur Champion is 210 points. Um, Minotaur Herd is, you know what? You could possibly do it. You could possibly do it. If It might be very much like in a way of squeezing out the points values as much as possible. But yeah, if you take, um, if you take a, um, a a Minotaur champion, then you can take one unit as a core choice. So if you make that the maximum size and really kind of push up the 25% of your value to up to like maybe 50%, which would be quite a lot. But they're f nearly 50 points each without options. So unit size is two plus. So you could probably go for a big size unit, actually, I reckon. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Stick a Saigor in there as well. What do you think of dragons infused by warp stones? I think it's a cool idea. I like that. How old do you think the new kits like the Age of Sigma Chaos Warriors would rank up on square bases? Probably be tricky. I don't think they're going to be as easy. So let's have a quick look at the Chaos Warriors just to refresh my mind about what they're going to look like. Um, where is my... There. So let's have a look. Chaos Warriors. Um, no, not too bad. I think the, the problems that you're going to face are maybe things like the capes and stuff, but they're, we are looking at bigger bases now. So, um, 30 mil bases they're going to be on, which is pretty, pretty decently sized. So, as a reference point, yeah, it's it's going to be things like this, this kind of floaty cape that's going to be problematic more than anything. Um, but I think in terms of weapons, it's not going to be too bad. So, if we have a look at quickly, quickly. So 30 mil square base. Um, I don't have yeah. So you're looking at like quite a, quite a decent sized base to be honest. So maybe you might be okay. I think the, the larger base sizes will definitely help. Definitely help. A lot of picks online they work really well on the big 35s. They're on 30 mil bases though. Um, so anyone who's put them on 35 mil bases, um, they're they're running on too big. Um, they are 30 mil by 30 mil base. I'll double check that just to make sure that I'm not giving out bad information. But I will double check. Chaos Warriors 30 mil by 30 mil base. So yeah, 30 mil. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's fine. Um, Yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to go after this. I'm going to have a look and see if you can build an all Minotaur army for Beasts of Chaos because that that'd be pretty cool. That would. I'd probably use Myrmidons instead, but maybe that's that's a good option. I might think about that one. 
I might think about that. Be a fairly low model count army because one of those counts as core, and it's just points value. It's not actually how many minimum units. And it's twenty five percent core. Yeah, I think you can do it. I think you can do it. I'm going to go through. I'll, I'll have a look. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I think we're coming up to the end of the end of the stream now. So, what's going on with the camera there? Let's sit in the middle so it focuses. Thank you very much for joining me. I built a whole four of these in the whole stream, uh, but we did have a look a lot at the old world books, the old world rules. So thank you very much for joining me whilst I waffled on and just wax lyrical about my uh, love for the old world. I'm incredibly happy to, I'm not choking up, I've just got a really dry throat actually. Sounds like I'm about to cry about the return of the old world. I'm really happy that it's come back. Um, there's been a few things with like availability of product. I don't, I imagine this is why there's a two-week pre-order window. So um, we'll see. There might be some more stuff added. Um, there will be more old world content. I'm really happy to see the old. I've I've been doing old world content for quite a while though. Really, I've been kind of stealth including old world content into Age of Sigma by using builds that I've done from <laughs> builds that I've borrowed from um, Total War Warhammer. I have to have a drink. Yeah, so I've been taking those those models from Total War Warhammer, put them on round base and saying they're Fraser Sigma, but they're actually old world models. So, yeah, really happy to see them. Um, uh, is there such thing as allied detachments in the old world? One quick question. I think there is. I think I remember rightly. You can take them. So, um, for example, Chaos Warriors. What's going on here? Um, up to twenty five percent of your army's points value may be spent on a single ally contingent drawn from any Warriors of Chaos army of infamy composition. Um, armies of infamy composition list one of the following grand army composition lists um, yeah so you can take them from orcs and goblins but they're uneasy you can take them from beastmen brayherds which are fine and you can take them from tomb kings of camry so yeah you can usually up to 25 percent, and then you can spend 20 percent of your army's points values on mercenaries as well so yeah lots of options for mercenaries i'm sure we'll see more rules about that in the future so yeah, thank you very much to everyone who has uh, tuned in for the stream. Um, I will be back again next Sunday. There will be um, a video in two weeks' time for the for this guy. Two weeks. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. If you haven't done so already, check out the, the video that I did for these unit fillers. If you're into the old world, these are the... Um, nice little build that I did and also if you watch that video like I said earlier click on the link that's in the first line of the description and in the pinned comments that takes you to the Warhammer community article um, it might help me out it might mean that we see more conversions and kit bashes on the Warhammer community website things like the unit fillers so I think that maybe just keeping an eye out how well it does so yeah if you can do that click on it like the article and yeah we hopefully we'll see more in the future so thank you very much to everyone who's tuned in um, I hope you have a wonderful week and I shall see you all next time.